It's going to be a great day in Clearwater, Florida, as we begin day three of the 2019 American Conference Baseball Championships. And we move back to the winner's side. These teams trying to make it to Saturday's semifinals. We have two games on tap for you here this afternoon. Starting off with the upstart, Wichita State Shockers. They got here with a 6-2 win, upsetting number one ECU on Tuesday afternoon. As you take a look at day one scores, they'll face the Huskies, the four seed, who gave Houston a day one loss on a walk off by a score of four to three. And that's how action wrapped up on day one. That brings us to this afternoon here in the winner's bracket. Of course, our first game, Wichita State and UConn. The nightcap will be Cincinnati and the Tulane Green Wave. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeff Brightwell alongside my broadcast partner, Garrett Wolbert. And Garrett, should be a fun afternoon of baseball. Wichita State playing with nothing to lose. Absolutely. Playing with house money. The eighth seed knocks off the regular season champs. Now they have a chance to do something, advance into semifinal play, get into the winner's bracket. I think they've got a pretty good shot. UConn, though, lots of experience. The Huskies have played for the tournament title twice in the last three seasons. They've got a lot of veteran players back, and they've got a pretty good pitcher on the bump today, too and one of the most experienced coaches. Let's see what these teams have to do to be successful today, starting off with the Huskies. Well, the Huskies as a staff have nearly 500 strikeouts. Bring the heat today, challenge this Wichita State offense, and on offense for the Huskies, hit for extra bases. They can drive it deep, they can find the gaps, they'll have a chance to put pressure on that defense for Wichita State and come away with a win. On Tuesday, the Wichita State Shockers got their offense going. They did a great job, almost scored double digits. They had double digit hits. If they can keep the offense humming, maybe break through against Fioli, time is fast, ball out, drive it through the yard, they'll have a good shot. And if their starting pitcher can go deep, I like the idea of Barnhouse being the starter today for the Shockers. He did not pitch against UConn in the regular season. Well, these teams had the day off yesterday. They come back into play today. Let's take a look at the Huskies' John Topa. Topa's one of those all-conference performers, a veteran leader for this team in the outfield. He can hit it hard, hit it for power. Excited to see what he does today if he can lead his team deep through the winner's bracket. Meanwhile, Wichita State will again rely on their all-conference player, Luke Ritter. Ritter is one of those seniors who's made his name known at Wichita State. He can hit the ball hard, gets on base often, he can run really well, and he's one of the guys that led into that first round victory against number one seed, East Carolina. Both teams looking for another day off and they get to Saturday in the conference semifinals. First pitch is on the way on the American Digital Network. Opportunities present themselves every day. Opportunities that move us forward. Opportunities to serve our time in your community. Explore your opportunities in the Air Force Reserve. Well, here's what they look like for the Yukon Huskies this afternoon. Topa leading it off. Prado hitting second at Short Woodworth. Winkle and Gazzo through the power of the order. Chris Winkle, Fedko Langer, and Michael Kiaviti. That is a look at how UConn will hit this afternoon. And Garrett, there is a look at the junior right-hander, Tommy Barnhouse. Big size, 6'3", 210 on the season. Two wins, two losses with a 4.6 ERA. He's made nine starts, Jeff, but only two of them were in conference play. They came against Houston and UCF. In 44 and two-thirds innings pitched, he has struck out 39, and opponents are hitting 258 against the junior. Well, that's what he looks like getting ready here. That's how they'll line up defensively. A Barnhouse on the mound. Kadena behind the plate. O'Brien at first. Ritter at second. Boyer at short. Wallace at third. Slavens, Catsby, and Van Voren left to right in the outfield for the Shockers. Beautiful day. A few more clouds, but we're going to have good weather all afternoon as it sits at 92 degrees here at Spectrum Field as we get set for first pitch. Little three mile an hour wind blowing gently in from right field to keep the fans uh, as comfortable as you can be. We walked around earlier today, Garrett, not as humid as it was yesterday. Going to be a pretty comfortable afternoon. You got to be excited for what's happening between these two programs. Wichita State in their second season in the American since coming over from the Missouri Valley. Shocks the number one seed. Now they have a chance to go into the semifinals with a win today. UConn, speaking of semifinals, that's kind of where they've set up real estate. Nine of the last 10 years in this tournament. They've been able to make it to the semifinals. John Topa will lead them off. The senior hitting 320 left fielder with four home runs, 30 driven in. will try to set the table. And UConn got a little speed in the order of the top three with at least 13 stolen bases. So Barnhouse, the right-hander, looks in. He'll come out of the stretch at 303 Eastern and delivers a strike. So Barnhouse quickly ahead, and that's what you want here. 
The eight trying to pull off another upset. And again, what's on the line is another day off straight to the semifinals on Saturday. The ability to really rest that bullpen. So he's ahead 0-2 as he rips that one foul over to the Shocker dugout. Barnhouse on the season came out as a starter, got starts against Pepperdine and UT Arlington. He's worked a little bit out of the bullpen as well. His first win of the year came against Memphis in relief when they stretched him out. He went four and two-thirds against the Tigers and got the win. His only other win on the season came on the road at Kansas. He started against the Jayhawks, went seven strong innings, and allowed one earned run. No two off speed. Got him to foul it as Kadena took the brunt of that. I and mean, I'm not sure if he took that off the shin guard or not, but went down immediately, and he's going to have to walk this off. That's not great. Two pitches into the ball game, and your catcher's sitting on his plate. Don't know if we want to watch. Oh, that's right off the front of his knee, too. Well, the shin guards are there to protect, but still, it's going to sting once you take a foul ball. But Kadena looks like he's going to be okay. And they came out to check on him, and home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez is going to wait at home plate until Ross says he's good to go. Says he's fine. So it'll remain an 0-2 count on John Topa. Topa this year, 31 walks, 46 strikeouts in the leadoff position. O2 will do it again. Swing, and this time he tipped it into the net, and so Barnhouse starts out nicely. A four-pitch strikeout on Topa. For Barnhouse, his 40th strikeout of the year. Spin rate on that one. You could see the seams going. Keeps it low and out of the strike zone for Topa's bat. Now 40 Ks in 40-plus innings pitch. Pretty impressive. Got to bring Anthony Prado. Prado, the junior, 309. 15 doubles he leads UConn. In that category, a pair of home runs and 28 driven in. All-conference first-teamer at shortstop for Anthony Prado. Two-time all-tournament team here in Clearwater through his first two years. Slider down and out will miss. That'll be the first ball thrown by Barnhouse. Got ahead 0-2 on Toba before the foul ball, and then retired him on the strikeout. Six Huskies made the all-conference first and second teams including the pitcher, Mason Fioli, who we'll see at the bottom of the first. 1-0 on the inside. That one's driven well, but foul. That'll make its way to the concourse. I don't know what it is. Prado sees the ball so well in this ballpark, and he's a talented player, but to come in as a freshman in 2017 and wrap out 10 hits, he followed that with 12 hits last year as a sophomore here in Clearwater. Well, he hits 309, but he's... That average a little deceiving. He's really a better hitter than a 309 hitter. And what I mean by that, 37 walks, only 22 strikeouts. He's a guy, even if he doesn't come away with a, a base hit in the scorebook, he's going to put a ball in play for the most part, move runners around, do the little things you need him to do. And the count 2-1. They're going to have Wallace at the line at third as will take the strike. You know, the Shockers played a tight game the other day with ECU until they opened it up late in the ballgame. So that'll be what Barnhouse is charged with today. Keep them in the game. Here's a high hit off the hard pan to third. Over to first. Nice gun by Wallace, and there's two away. All-out effort there by Prado down the base pass, but a better throw from the hot corner to come across the diamond. On the outside corner, and he pulls it. Well, you got to make that transition so quick, and he does exactly that. Nice stretch by O'Brien at first. Had to come to the home plate side of first base. Michael Woodworth, the senior second baseman, 319, five homers, 35 runs batted in. He'll be up on the plate. And Woodworth again gets ahead or rather Barnhouse, ahead of Woodworth. So Barnhouse got ahead of Topa 0-2 before the strikeout. Got behind Prado briefly 1-0, but is pounding at strike one, which is the most important pitch 
0-1 from Barnhouse. Osby that time will miss. Woodworth comes into the game a 319 hitter, the senior. Went 0 for 4 in the walk-off win against the University of Houston. Would you believe that was UConn's first walk-off of the season? <laughs> David Langer with that historic hit. 1-1 one, one, flies in the center field. Catsby over to his left. Camps up under it, and it'll be a quick 1-2-3 inning for Barnhouse. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. No score through a half inning. The Shockers are due up. It's the American Conference Championships brought to you by Air Force Reserve. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is our backyard. This is home. This is Yukon. Here's a look at the Wichita State lineup today. Boyer at short will lead things off. The second baseman, an all-conference performer, Ritter, hits second. It'll be O'Brien, Wallace, and Kadena through the power of the order. Slavin, Segris, Katsvi, and Van Boren will round out the lineup for Wichita State. They're going to face one of the best in the league, the junior left-hander, Mason Fioli. Garrett, who could have a historic afternoon. Well, he's piled up the strikeouts in his three-year career with the UConn Huskies. He started against Wichita State earlier this year. Seven innings pitched, two hits, no runs, ten strikeouts. He picked up his second win of the year. He's a talent, Jeff, who is three strikeouts away from owning the all-time record at UConn. Here's the defense, Fioli on the hill, Winkle, Pat Winkle behind the plate, Chris over at first, Woodworth at second, Prado at short, Langer at third, Topa, Chiaviti, and Fedko from left to right in the outfield. Jordan Boyer, the senior shortstop, 316, five homers, 36 driven in. They will play him about normal in the infield, not anticipating a bunt, it looks like, as he fouls it off to the right side. Jeff showed you the lineup for Wichita State. Five underclassmen today, including a trio of freshmen in Slavens, Segrist, and Van Voren. But they can hit 40 home runs on the season. They piled up doubles, too. The 0-1 low. Well, we got a good look at their offense on Tuesday when they opened that ball game up late. ECU nearly rallied in the bottom of the night, but they showed some pop, did what they needed to do to grab that win. 1-1, one, one, it gets the strike call. Boyer, such an important hitter for the Shockers. Second in multi-hit games, first in multi-RBI games. Got to get on base. Ground ball up the middle, past the mound. Quickly over to first from Woodworth, and there's one away. So one up, one down here at Fort Fioli. Looping, breaking ball. You saw Fioli stick his foot out there, thought better of it. Let his second baseman clean it up. Never know where that ball is going to go on a ricochet. No need for a kick save here. Let your infielder <laughs> make the play. Just down and out here to Luke Ritter. Ritter, the senior, 336. A nine hole runs. He is tied with... Paxton Wallace for the team lead. He has 37 RBI, which leads the shocker, takes the strike. Looks back for clarification from the home plate umpire. Team leader with a 336 average. He's on a current five-game hitting streak. His longest this year was 16. 
There's a high chopper that's going to be foul over to the left side. Ritter, a hit on day one, one for two. Drew three walks, though, so he reached four times in the championship opener for the Shockers. That one's down in the dirt. Again, it was just a 1-1 game going to the eighth when Wichita State would take a 2-1 lead. They would add four in the ninth inning to win at 6-2. 2-2, leaves it low again. And he'll draw the base on ball, so Ritter is aboard. Ritter, one of their bigger base stealing threats, 12 for 14 on the year. So Wichita State against a guy like Mason Fioli, any way possible just to get on base. Doesn't matter if you hit, you walk, put the defense in motion, try to reach on an air. You just want to find a way to get on and move these runners around. And that's what they do. This is a, an offense that averages nearly six runs per game, puts the bat on the ball. They've only been shut out three times in 2019. Gets it in the air to right center field. And they'll give away to Kiavitti. Not carrying like it has so far this week, but O'Brien with a long fly ball to center. Gave it a ride right down the middle of the plate. But Fiole's center fielder will take care of that one. So here is Wallace. 256, nine homers, 35 driven in. Trying to get Ritter around from first or at least extend the inning. First one comes down. Anthony's called strike. We told you Ritter of 12 stolen bases, but it's going to be a tough, tough go of it today against Pat Winkle, 15. Runners thrown out on the year. One of the better throwing catchers in the league. Back to first, nearly close. got him. So close. That would have been our first pickoff of the tournament. He had his hand in right as the tag was applied. Deep breath by Fiole, who's listed at 6'1", 195, a product of Rhode Island. Get another healthy lead for Ritter and leaning just a bit this time up at out. That'll miss to even up at one and one on that pickoff move. If Chris Winkle answered a reaction, could have got that leg down maybe and blocked off the bag. Sometimes you can sneak that past the umpire. Doesn't see him. <laughs> doesn't catch a block in the bag. One one. Oh, he flinches again this time back standing up. Wallace had a nice day against ECU. Two for five with a double, two runs. Swing and a mess, one and two. And now Fioli, a strike away from retiring Wichita State here in the bottom of the first. It'll be Pat Winkle, Paul Gazzo, Connor Fedko coming up in the top half of the second. Fioli gets him a swing and miss. And that's the first strike out of the day for Fioli, and that will end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. And a runner left on. We're headed to the second here in Clearwater. Opportunities present themselves every day. Opportunities that move us forward. Opportunities to serve our time in your community. Explore your opportunities in the Air Force Reserve. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, or a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. There is power in the sportsmanship that is displayed across the American. Power is respecting opponents, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. The American, power for life.
little bit of a breeze, not nearly as brisk as it was last night in that UCF Memphis game. Makes it comfortable this afternoon as we sit at, again, 92 degrees under the palm trees. That's a look at the matchup as the Bearcats advanced on day one. They will play here tonight against the two-lane green wave, but we still have eight more solid innings with Wichita State and UConn. Fans enjoying the afternoon. And Garrett will probably see a few more people make their way in now that we have hit Thursday for the long Memorial Day weekend. Great place to spend your Memorial Day weekend with your family and your friends. I was really impressed with uh, the way Barnhouse worked in the first inning. You take a look at John Topa, Anthony Prado. Both those guys have more than 200 career hits. He set them down rather easily. A one, two, three inning. Pat Winkle, Paul Gazzo, Cotter Fedko. Also, if you're the junior, Tommy Barnhouse, obviously a lot of the attention today on the matchup against Mason Fioli and what he has done in his career. A long fly ball left field. That's going to tail foul out of the reach of Wallace and Slavin. So, not only a challenge to face a UConn team, but one of the best pitchers in the league. It's a great opportunity, though, for, for Barnhouse. Got the wind blowing in at his back right now. The flags in right center field coming towards him on the hill. Always nice to feel like you can throw downhill a little bit more. No one one High fly ball. To right field, Van Voren looking up, and that one will clear the wall. And it's a leadoff home run for Pat Wingle, the freshman with a six home run, 31st RBI of the year, and the Huskies take the early lead. Winkle must have heard me talking about pitching downhill. He sat into that one and redirected it over the wall in right field. Quality shot. Our first run of the ball game here on winner's bracket Thursday. Barnhouse has that one kind of run away, and it went right into the barrel of his bat. Clobbered that one 330 feet away over the wall, out towards the walkway. Paul Gazzo, the junior, 286, four homers, 12 driven in. Now the right-hander will take a shot at it. He'll take it down and out. We'll see how Barnhouse comes back down. Just needs to settle down, no big deal. It's not a free base or anything. Teams in this warm weather will get swings off. A 1-0 strike. Evens it up at 1-1. Eighth home run of the year that Barnhouse has given up in 45 innings pitched. But like Jeff said, something you can just shake off. It's a 1-0 game. Gazzo, a nice day one, two for three. Scored a pair of runs, drove a run in. He'll step out of the batter's box here in just a second. Trying to run him inside, and again, Kadena got caught. He's taking a foul ball. Now he takes the hop, so rough start today for Kadena. And again, Manny Gonzalez will give him a break. Early in the game, just a one nothing Husky lead here in the top half of the second one of two games, as Garrett mentioned. It's got a nice, nice ring to it, and hate to see that. Winner's bracket Thursday. We've always talked about elimination Friday. Winner's bracket Thursday. Two one off to the right side, makes its way over to the suites. Gazzo hanging tough up there. He had a great day against. Houston, two for three, two runs scored in an RBI. Great story about his brother, Sal, over at Tulane, who had a huge home yeah. run in the Green Waves win. Two, two from Barnhouse. Got him out in front, swing and a miss. So a really nice job by Barnhouse after giving up the leadoff home run, comes back and gets his second strike out of the game. Thought that was a nice graphic that the American Conference staff put out with the Gazos after the first night. One of the hottest hitters in the tournament here in Kyler Fedko. A couple of extra base hits in the win against Houston. Picked up two RBIs. Hitting 245, four homers, 22 driven in. Nine doubles, a pair of triples to go along with it. And he's ahead of the count, 1-0. and oh.
So the infield is going to stay back here for Barnhouse. Fedco, the right-hander, leaning out over the plate just a little bit. Nice pitch by Barnhouse. Saw him leaning out a little bit, came inside, jammed him on the handle. So again, we mentioned the winner of this game advances to Saturday's semifinals. That will begin at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central. One and one. A little more velocity that time at 86. Leaves it down and out. So important for Wichita State to get a quality start out of that man, Barnhouse, today. They got one out of Clayton McGinnis in their opening round win. He went six and a third. Only gave up one earned run, struck out three, and threw just over 100 pitches. It ended up being Alex Siegel who came away with the win in relief. The 2-1 inside again. Well, Wichita State went three deep, as you mentioned. Garrett Siegel gets the win. They went with Walters briefly for just 11 pitches. Lindemann would wrap things up with 17 pitches to get his first save. They got the day off, so everyone really in order if they had to come back today, but would be pretty fresh coming back on Saturday if they advance past today. Battle off left side, that gets out of play. Fills the count up at three and two. Fedco with a triple and a home run in that earlier win against Houston. It'll raise the slugging percentage up just a touch. But swinging here with nobody on base and one out. Three-two offering, grounded a short. Boyer wings it over to first, and there's two down. So really nice job now. You come back, you get the second, first and second out after the leadoff home run. So innocent home run to lead it off, not really affecting Barnhouse too much. Nice job from the side that time, Boyer. We have the easy out. Here's Chris Winkle, the first baseman. 243, second on the team with 12 doubles, two homers, 35 driven in for the left-hander. That was his brother Pat with the uh, leadoff home run, the other left-hander. And those are two of the three lefties in the lineup today. one -oh. Just drops it in there at 81 miles an hour for the called strike. Winkle was one of six Huskies who had a hit in their opening round win against Houston. Outfield straight away, the infield, maybe a slight shift to the right side as he pops it up. Foul territory, they'll give it a look, but that one's going to get up high in the bleachers. Finds the chair, backs down the left field line. Winkle in his junior season, a native from the state of Connecticut by way of Orange. And he's played with this team the last two years when they made a run to the championship game, but ultimately fell to ECU last season in the semifinals every year in his career. 1-2, he got up under it, fouls it back. So he battles at 1 and 2. Winkle this year, 13 walks, but 48 strikeouts. The Shockers, meanwhile, will have Kadena, Slavens, and Segris in the bottom half of the second inning. One nothing Huskies here in the top half. Ball and two strikes, and he drives that one down the right field line. That is going to hook foul. That had the distance, though. That was 330 <laughs> feet and rising, Jeff. That ball was smoked. Well, the left-handers so far, the Winkles have seen the ball fairly well. Still one and two. Barnhouse may be served well to... Maybe waste to pitch a little up and out here, maybe down and away. Chris with two home runs on the season, got a ways to go to catch his brother, who's now got six. One 
One, two, comes down and in, and that'll miss. Couldn't get him to go fish it after that one, so it evens it up at two and two. Langer is on deck. Now they'll put Van Voren back a little bit in right field after Winkle hit that long foul ball. And again, he gets another long one. Over the right field, over the roof, down the first base side. So two and two. Barnhouse trying to get Winkle out in front, 79 miles an hour on that offering. Well, he sent him some off-speed stuff. Let's see if he tries to run it in here. Come in with a hard slider, try to jam him in, saw him off with a fastball. Stays on the outside and just misses strike three as Kadena tried to frame it up. That's about as close as they come. Nice eye at the plate by Winkle. And early in the ball game with a one to nothing lead, you can afford to take pitches like that. Top of the ninth, don't try it. Great plate appearance here by Winkle. He was down one, two, but he's battled back to fill the count up. If he reaches again, David Langer, the third baseman, coming to the plate. And he does. Really nice plate appearance as Winkle will grab his 14th walk of the season now with two outs. And a man aboard for Langer. First walk of the ball game issued by Barnhouse. That's his 24th of the season. Now we'll have to contend with a runner behind him on first. And the hero from game one against the University of Houston, David Langer, who walked us off. 204, a home run, nine driven in this year. It's his 35th game, 28th start of the season. Chris Winkle leads with 12 stolen bases. Up it in for a ball. Kadena has thrown out 12. You know, he couldn't have done it, that walk off against one of the better relievers, Fred Villarreal for Houston. I mean, just one of the better arms in the conference the last couple of years. The 1-0 pitch popped him up in the shallow right center field. Ritter coming out. He's going to take it all the way. He'll make the catch, and he'll get out of the inning. A run. On the one hit, no errors, and one left on a base. It was Pat Winkle with the leadoff home run, his sixth of the year in 31 RBIs. UConn leads at 1-0. In the meantime, let's go downstairs to the third member of our broadcast crew, Haley Outen. Jeff, with both of these teams advancing to the winner's bracket on Tuesday, they earned that vital day of rest on Wednesday. And for UConn head coach Jim Penders, he said his team really used it as a mental health day. They had an optional practice, and players that were feeling tired, he really just wanted them to kick their feet up and, and get some rest. And for the UConn players, they've actually been here since Sunday, so to win that game on Tuesday and have to wait till Thursday to play, he said it's kind of strange because they've been here all week, but they've really only played one game. Wichita State, kind of the same thing, just an hour practice yesterday and then a 9 p.m. meeting last night. Thanks a lot, Haley. As uh, she talked to Todd Butler after the game, thought it was amusing when he says, look, I've been down here, I haven't been to the beach yet. We got the win, we're going to take advantage of this stuff. Well, everybody's going to have to play after this day after day. So take advantage of that off day because once we advance past this, there's no rest until championship is won. And there is Todd Butler in his sixth season for the Wichita State Shockers wearing that sharp script W hat that we have come to know and love since uh, back in the 80s. And Gene Stevenson uh, started that big tradition. He carries it on. And they've got, a, I think, a good thing established here at Wichita State, obviously, with their history and now coming forward, moving up to the American Conference. Well, look, what you want to send kids to professional baseball, second most draft picks in college baseball with 11 players drafted last year. He's coached 10 All-Americans with the Shockers. An opportunity here to keep progressing the program in the right direction. You come away with a win today, qualify for the semifinals. You have to be beaten twice not to play for a championship. Ross Cadena, the catcher. Sophomore hitting 259, a pair of home runs and 23 driven in. Sophomore up South Lake, Texas. A year ago, played just 19 games, 12 starts, gets it in the air to the right side. Winkle and Woodworth, and Winkle takes it. 
One up, one down, three in a row. Retired now by Fioli after he gave up a one-out walk to Luke Ritter last inning, and that'll bring up Brady Slavens, the left fielder, got his first career home run or his first home run of the season the other day. And that really sparked things for Wichita State. They had taken the lead the inning before, but the freshman with his first career home run, that was the emphatic homer that really gave him some breathing room. Strikeout by Paxton Wallace to end the first for Fioli. He's second all-time in career strikeouts for the Huskies and is now three away from setting the all-time mark. The all-time leader is Tim Kate, who has 270. Some pretty good arms have come through that program. To already be there in your junior season, quite impressive. 2-0, down and in, now a 3-0 count. Slavin's 44th game, 36th start this year. Takes it down and out. Well, Slavin's continues to have a nice championship. The home run on Tuesday now draws the one-out walk. Slavin's of four stolen bases. Jack Segrist, the designated hitter, another freshman. So three freshmen in this lineup. 241, no homers, eight driven in. But they've got to like what's coming up now. Three freshmen, two sophomores in the lineup next season. They'll have some experience in the order and still a lot of youth with experience. Fioli runs it in and a called strike. Segrist. Three-year letter winner at Plano West High School. District MVP as a senior when he hit 331 with eight doubles, a pair of homers, drove in 21. Was a preseason All-American in high school, and that was just chip foul straight behind him. Down 0-2 in the count. We'll have to short the swing up, try to move Slavens over. Cats V on deck. Lefty versus righty as he takes a long look over to the bag. That one rocketed foul into the upper deck. Sends one into right field. That's going to drop in in front of Fedko. And the Shockers have something going here in the bottom of the second with runners at first and second and one away, and Catsby on the way. Back-to-back -back innings with base runners against Mason Fioli. That's part of the blueprint. Now you've got to have big knocks like that to send them around and score. Catsby will dig in the junior center fielder, 268. Eight doubles, two homers, 21 driven in. An RBI opportunity here and a chance to tie this ball game up. Cats v. 273 with runners in scoring position this year. A nice block by Winkle back behind the plate. That'll hold the runners at bay against Cats v. Good size up there at the plate. Listed at 6'3", 190 out of Lee's Summit, Missouri. Cats v. looking for his first hit this week after an 0 oh, for 4 debut on Tuesday. Takes the fastball up high, and it's 2 and 0. Oh. I can't tell you why, but there is something in the water in Lee Summit, Missouri, that produces athletes. Former first round draft pick of the Cubs, Alex Lang, pitched in the College World Series. National champion gymnast, Sarah Finnegan. And here we are with Jacob Katzfee. College athletes galore from Lee Summit, Missouri. 2-0, and oh, that's a called strike on the outside. So Toba back a little bit in left field. That go normal and right here to the left-hander. Leaves it downstairs, and so Winkle gets rid of the mask. 
Checks on Slavens at second, Segrist at first. They're going nowhere that time. Hitters count now, three and one. Nice job by Winkle to bring that second to last pitch back up and get the strike call. That puts a little pressure though on Fiole who's behind in the count, three and one. Infield comes set, Langer just back of the grass at third. Just missed and the bases are loaded. Ducks on the pond for the Shockers for David Van Voren, the freshman. And not sure if the junior may be pressing just a little too much here as Josh McDonald's going to come check on him. Try to get him settled down, see what the situation is, is, mechanical or mental. I don't think they were expecting to have to come visit Fiole in the second inning in this ballgame, but that's the pressure that Wichita State has put on him. Wind continues to blow in behind them, but the bases are loaded with shockers right now. And it'll bring up David Van Voren to the plate, the right fielder hitting in the nine spot today. McDonald has said his piece. Big pitch coming up, Jeff, with only one out. Well, big opportunity for their freshmen. And again, they've got three freshmen in the order, Slavens and Segrist, who are at second and third. And now Van Voren, and they've got to like what they see out of this freshman group, a chance for another one of these newcomers to make an impact, carry them over. Who knows, maybe the rest of this weekend, but certainly to next season. And the freshmen would rather not wait till next season. They would like to get their names out here this weekend, be playing here on Sunday. And they've got an opportunity to get an early lead on the Huskies. I don't know how often you ever hear of having 16 freshmen on one squad. I remember that Cincinnati team Coach Ty had from years ago. So many of them became starters. That was a large freshman class. Got a lot of baseball ahead of them. Oh, and one low. Evens it up at one and one. Yeah, I really think the plays that Wichita State has made in the field, good pitching from Barnhouse, the way they're battling at the plate, they're showing a lot of confidence coming into this game despite being an eight seed. One, one, Fioli though, is just a pitch away if you get that double play ball to get out of the inning. Leaves it down and in, and the advantage goes down to Van Voren ahead, two, one. UConn has turned 25 double plays on the season. Dugout would love to explode towards the plate with a big hit here for Wichita State. Strike. Called to even things up at two and two. Good placement by Fiole, 90 miles an hour. Here's another look. Right across the plate. Yeah, Van Voren would like to elevate a ball here, get a fly out at the least, try to get Slavens in from third, tie the ball game up. And that was under his feet. And looks like it may have caught him. As he's going to jog to first, and they're going to say, no, we don't think it hits you as home plate umpire Manny Gonzalez is pointing down at the plate. And they're going to come out and ask about this call because Van Voren either definitely thought it hit him or he was doing a nice sales pitch and immediately jogging down to first base. Didn't hesitate whatsoever. So the crew's going to get together. They're still arguing the case. And again, we've had a few reviews here. Hit by pitch could come into play, but I believe that may be after the seventh inning. What's your, what's your take on it, Gary? That's not till later in the game. We do have review in 2019, but the way that the home plate umpire sees it, that's going to be the call that sticks unless his crew reverses it they're not able to take a look at that kind of reviewable call till later in the ball game. They'll still get together and discuss, see if any of the other crew saw anything. Shane Matheny at first, Mark Wagers at second, Ryan Broussard, your third base umpire, and Manny now, Gonzalez, the home plate umpire. Jeff, they're under the assumption that they can go check it out. We're looking at the, the guide to the reviewable calls right here. We'll see, but if you look later on in the ball game, hit by pitch is one of them. I, I think what Coach Butler is arguing about is one, don't tell my guy he didn't get hit. He's not trying to get some cheap hit by pitch out there, but you're taking the tying run off the board by saying he didn't get hit by that ball. Bases loaded, hit by a pitch, and they'll walk the run back to third. 
You know, Todd Butler are going to battle for his ball club. I mean, he knows what the deal is. He's the eighth seed. He pulled off a day one upset. You're facing one of the better pitchers, not only in the league, but in the nation and Fioli. I mean, every run is going to be so valuable today that you can get against Fioli. When you read the, the rules, it talks about what is acceptable to review between the first and sixth innings. It says the crew chief may initiate review at his discretion any time during the game. They decided to insta or initiate a review there. Here's what they're seeing, Jeff. Well, it definitely kicked up some dirt. Did it go off the toe, the toe of his right foot? Did it go off his left foot when it came in before it hit? Right now, our production crew in talks with the, the umpiring crew here. Interested to see what this call is going to be because if they give him the hit-by-pitch, if they overturn their call on the field, it's a tie ball game. I think the chances are better it hit his left foot, the yeah. front foot, than the back one from that angle. We've had, what, three or four reviews all held up so far in the championships. This one may be the first one we see overturned. I don't have any complaints at all. The, the fact that it might slow the game down a touch is fine because you'll get the call right. And that's what's important to the student athletes, the coaches, the fans, and everyone else out there. Well, they still have not come up beyond the dugout over at third base. Right now we've got a one nothing Husky lead, but it's as it is now, bases loaded, one out, and potentially it's going to be bases loaded, still one out, and a run is in. Fioli does not hit a lot of batters. In 67-plus innings pitched, he's only hit seven. They zoomed in on it. Great work by the production crew. Did it get a piece of that left cleat? You can see the Under Armour insignia on it. It's so clear. I think there's a chance that it got him. I don't know if the, the crew will overturn their call, though, of no hit. No, may have gotten the spike. The umpires are looking at the screen. I'm looking at the scoreboard. Here they come. I think they're going to send them back to first base. Or not first, but back to the plate. Yeah, they're going to call. Yep, so it confirms. So every review has confirmed the initial call by the umpires so far in the championships. Nice job by the American crews. Scoreboard says 95 degrees, and Fiole had to just sit out there for <laughs> about four or five minutes sweating with the bases loaded behind him. But it works in his favor. So now <laughs> Van Boren calls time. <laughs> He's going to have to go back at it at three and two. Fioli, and he drives this one into left center field, and it works out. Even better, he gets the RBI single, and he's going to get two ribbies out of it as a throw comes in a third, and David Van Voren, a two-run single, and the Shockers on top, two to one. What a clutch piece of hitting by the nine hole. Had just 13 RBIs on the year. Van Voren with the long single. Two runs will come across, and the runner safe at third. That's R the way to go on top. RBIs 12 and 13 for Van Voren. And remember, in the bottom four in the order, that's three freshmen and a junior doing the job. you got to like what you see out of Slavin, Sigrist, and Van Voren, the freshman, and, of course, the junior, Catsby, who was very aggressive in going to third. Squares the bunt, pops it up to Fioli. There's no play either way. I don't mind the call. Unfortunately, the execution was not there as he got up under the ball. I like the thought process, expand the lead with that runner at third. Unfortunately, Boyer couldn't get it done. The right-hander could have pushed that to the right side. You'd have certainly had an interesting play at the plate, depending on how they fielded it. Well, I think for Coach Butler, it's a sigh of relief. They took a run off the board. Drops it in there for the strike to Ritter. Ritter would walk an inning ago. Would not think we would come to this game and see three walks to just one strikeout for Fioli, though, so far through one and two-thirds. 
Infield shifted a little bit to the left side. Down and in. Nice dig by Winkle. Ritter didn't see a lot to hit in the first game. High fly ball to left center field. This one is deep. Topa Chiaviti, and this one is going to ricochet off the wall, and it's going to end up being a two-out, two-run double for Luke Ritter, the all-conference second baseman. will drive in RBIs 38 and 39. Wow, a pair of extra base hits. Just a beautiful shot all the way to the wall. Just missed being a three-run home run. Let's watch Ritter make contact, and this one just soared out towards the berm in left center field. It'll bounce in between the yellow line and that eight-foot wall out there. Two runs come across to score. And we've got a much more interesting ball game at 4-1 to one in favor of Wichita State. Well, the Shockers, again, ended that game in a flurry on... Tuesday picking back up here early in the game on Thursday and the left hander fouls it off to the left side this is Mason O'Brien he is the eighth shocker to hit here in the inning quality at bats there by Wichita State Van Voren with the bases loaded thought he had been hit by a pitch instead he's got a two RBI single a bunt pop out to the pitcher and then Ritter cleans it up with a two RBI double Lefty, lefty matchup for Fioli. Just off the plate, evens it up at one and one. Keep in mind that the Shockers are doing this against an all-conference first-team pitcher, a junior for UConn. Fioli in a little bit of trouble here, trying to get out of the inning. Misses the 12 6 breaking ball. He's over 40 pitches. That was 43 early in this ball game. Actually, 44 now for Mason. Fouled it off. Evens it up at 2 and 2. So a four run inning here at the bottom of the second for the Shockers. This is kind of uncharted territory for Fioli. The most earned runs he's given up all year is five. That came against Michigan State. We're in the second inning. Well, Jim Pender's still a lot of confidence in this veteran. No movement in the bullpen right now. He knows he's just a strike away. He knows it's a long way to go. Seven more innings. Ground ball to the right side. That'll get... Woodworth, who run to his left, shows some nice range, flips it over to first, but four runs in the inning on three hits, no errors, one left on base. We play two, and the Shockers are up 4-1 in Clearwater. This is St. Pete Clearwater home to 35 miles of white sand bliss. But it's more than emerald surf and gulf breezes. Beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of life, nature, art, music, or whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast in St. Pete Clearwater. Love the beach. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. Wichita State puts four on the board in the bottom half of the second to take a 4-1 lead. And Jim Penders back down to the third base coach's box trying to get his Huskies back into this ball game. And what a job Jim Penders has done. He's led the Huskies to five NCAA tournament appearances. 47 players drafted or signed by pro baseball clubs. The American Conference 
champions in 2016. And Garrett, I think the most exciting thing about Coach Penders is going to be that new facility. He's a guy that's been uh, there as an assistant for so long, now the longtime head coach. You talk about someone that's born and bred Husky. It's Jim Penders, and, and great to see him get that reward and maybe not have to play 18 to 20 road right. games to start the season. And he's had some years. They've been a one seed. They've had to play away from stores. You never know what's going to happen now here in the future. It is going to be a gleaming facility on campus. Can't wait to see it. Maybe work there in the future. But he was a student athlete, an assistant coach, the head coach. It's, it's just in his blood. High pop up to the left side. Give it. Slavens. Just to his left. And there's one up and one down. So Barnhouse continues to pitch well. Gave up the leadoff home run, but really did a nice job to come back and get the strikeout and get out of the inning now, just creating some soft contact. I'm really impressed with Barnhouse, and I think they made the right decision today. He's a quality starter, and they didn't see him during the regular season. So for UConn, you're trying to get some kind of tape online of this kid and see what he throws, what's the scouting report. So he's a little new to them. Been successful so far. John Toba would strike out in the first inning. Topa came into the ballgame, 324 homers and 30 driven in. And they'll shift a little bit to the left side. They've got Wallace pinching the baseline. Barnhouse leaves it down and out. So a 2-0 count. So the one hit, the two walks, or yeah, one walk, two strikeouts so far for Barnhouse. He's been very efficient. Just 37 pitches coming into to this batter now up to 41. There's a strike down the middle, two and one. Topa part of that senior class in 2019, seven members who played in a pair of NCAA tournaments, won the 2016 American Baseball Championship here in Clearwater, and they're not done yet. Leaves it down and out. Now a hitter's count for Toba. Bats with nobody on one down here in the top half of the third. That'll be a one-out walk issue, the second walk of the game for Barnhouse. Topa this year, again, 13 stolen bases. Katina bound the, behind the plate. He's thrown out 12. Believe it or not, that's the first time that Topa has been on base in this tournament. Struck out. He was 0 for 4 in the opening game, so draws the walk and gets on here in the third. Prado, 308, a pair of home runs, 28 driven in. Does well with runners on, 342 on the season. But Barnhouse, one pitch away, looking for the 50th double play of the season turned by the Shockers. Wow. Won't get it as he gets it in this one to left field. This one's going to stay in the yard, and a nice job by Slavens. He got a nice jump on it. And you could tell that wind played with it a little bit, had to go back to his left, but he got a nice line on it. There's two outs. Boy, he's just smooth gliding out in the outfield, running hard to his left, made that look a lot easier than it was, and makes the catch. Michael Woodworth, who flew to center in the first, is 0 for 1. Woodworth now 318 this year, five homers, 35 driven in. And again, this is a guy that puts it in play. 26 walks, only 20 strikeouts in well over 225 plate appearances. The runner's going to get an early jump. Here comes the throw just a little bit high, and Topo will slide in with his 14th stolen base. Came into the game. You had talked about Kadena's prowess behind the plate. That one sailed on him just a little bit. Pretty good jump, too. Bring that down as quick as you can, but correct call made. I like the arm by Kadena. That stolen base taking more off Barnhouse. He really got the very big jump on that secondary lead. Topa now tied for the team lead with 14 stolen bases on the year. The 0-1 off the handle. That one is going to fall in the right center field, and the Huskies will get a run back. Big two-out hit by Michael Woodworth, and Woodworth drives in his 36th run of the year. That cuts the lead in half to 4-2. All because of that stolen base by Topa. Got himself in scoring position. And this one's going to hang up long enough. Topa going hard. With two outs, he'll score from second base without the throw. 
tying run coming to the plate in Pat Winkle. He got the leadoff home run an inning ago. He shot it out to right field. Woodworth, 14 stolen bases. He led UConn coming into the ball game before Topa tied him up earlier this inning. Big swing and a miss. 0 and 1 at 87 miles an hour. Fly ball to left field. Slavin's back a little bit. This has a little carry to it on the warning track, but he'll run out of room, and that'll end the inning. UConn will come away with one run on one hit, no errors, and one left on base. It's 4-2 UConn. Coming up after the break, a very special guest is on the way. We all dream about our next vacation, but some of us turn those dreams into action. Bookers, the doers, they hit that confirmation button and let's go. Because bookers know that the perfect place to stay is right there for the booking. Be a booker at booking.com. The world's number one choice for booking accommodations. Four to two, excuse me, Wichita State with the early lead over the Connecticut Huskies here in Clearwater, Florida. And Wichita State had the 8-1 upset on day number one. And they are trying to advance to Saturday in the semifinals, get another day off. A gentleman that knows all about postseason play and advancing in conference tournaments and postseason play. The legendary coach of the Wichita State Shockers who put that Shocker program on the map. Gene Stevenson joins us now in the booth. Here's a ground ball to the left side. Picked up and an easy throw to first. One away. Nice play over at third. Well, Coach, excited to have you down here for a second year in a row. Well, we're excited about being here. And I think that, uh, you know, the team is, is playing hard and playing pretty well. A little disappointed when we walked that guy the last <laughs> half of the inning. One thing you don't want to do once you have a very good inning, which we had four runs in the bottom of the second, was to allow somebody to get a free pass. And that, that really hurt. Then they got a big jump on him and a handle shot to right center. So it, that's baseball. So you've got to be in a position to put the, put the clamps on people once you've gotten the lead like that. I saw your reaction. You came in here a half inning ago, and, boy, that, that coaching never gets out of your blood. I just saw you kind of grunt when he threw that one-out walk. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, there's, uh, that's inexcusable, frankly. So, but, you know, they're young, and that's, that's, uh, that's what makes this game interesting. Coach, let's talk a little bit about you. Then we'll talk a little bit more about this program now over the last six years. Uh, took over a program, Coach, uh, that had been dormant for several seasons. A uh, couple hey. of winning seasons to start for yourself. And then, then you blew that thing up and you went on an incredible run there. Uh, several trips, numerous trips to Omaha. Ended up capturing that national championship. Well, that's true. We had a lot of great teams, obviously, 36 years worth. Never had a losing season. Average 51 wins a year for 36 years. That's pretty good, no matter what. But, you know, the, the important thing was that we had good people, played hard, guys that came in that maybe not highly recruited or highly touted, but good athletes who wanted to be something. Looks for a sing eye single. He's going to get it. They can't get the pickup. And so the runner will reach with a pair of outs. Good job by Brady Slavens there. Hit the ball back up the middle. What do you think about this freshman? Got his first career home run the other day, and it was a big one. It opened the, the oh, game in the ninth against ECU. Huge, huge. And this guy stood to be a senior in high school. Yeah. You know that. He came in in January not knowing anybody, except that he's, you know, from Kansas. Uh, he, he's a good young man and uh, decided not to play the draft deal and graduate early and came in in January and met all the people for the first time. And, boy, he's been a great, great thing for us. Coach, I'm sure one of the bigger thrills you've 
been to Omaha the, the numerous times, the national championship, a lot of major leaguers, but coaching your brother Phil had to be a real treat. He had a 47-game hit streak when he played for you at Wichita. Well, and that, at that time, that was the record right. until... Uh, Ventura? He, yeah, yeah, until Robin came in, <laughs> and uh, he had the great year that he had. So, but, you know, we've been blessed a lot of times over. We've had a number of guys in the major leagues, I think about 35 of them that made the major leagues over time. And, and the, the deal is that... You know, the most important thing I want to tell you about is that we had good people who played hard, who made good grades, who did a lot of good things, and graduated a lot of young men. You look at the modern era of college baseball, as that ball will get to the backstop. That'll put a runner in scoring position with two outs now, and so the Shockers have an opportunity to get that run back. But, Coach, you look at the modern era over the last 15 to 20 years, you guys were one of the programs ahead of the curve. Much like football and basketball, college baseball now, big business, it's become a facilities and an arms race. In 85, you guys put together a permanent site there in X Stadium. Well, and you know, four years after we started in 78, in 1982, we're playing the national championship game. Right. And everybody, for the first time, saw Wichita State, you know, really play. And it's the first time that the uh, ESPN ever televised every game live and in color and so now it was a big deal but back home we didn't have anything we didn't have a dressing room we didn't have any seats we didn't have any bathrooms we had nothing except you know flatbed trailers we'd bring in during the season and set them up set sideline football bleachers up on top of them that might hold 50 people but the the end result was that you know uh we we did make a name for ourselves at that time and after that it was really a lot of fun uh difficult along the way but now we have one of the greatest facilities in all of college baseball. It was piecemealed together, one step at a time, all through private funding, all through private funding. And, and it, that really says, says a lot for the alumni. It says a lot for the city of Wichita. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very proud of those guys and, and that group and the people who supported us. You were ahead of the curve along with uh, Aron Polk at Mississippi State, Aron Frazier down at Miami, recognizing the potential of college baseball there in the early into the mid-'80s that really put this sport on a national map. Oh, it's, it's, you know, it's been a fantastic ride. It really has. You know, and if they'd allow me to do it, I'd still do it, you know. But the, the deal is that it was uh, something that, you know, really nobody had ever done it like that before, you know, where you come into a cold-weather climate, with uh, no history of any success whatsoever of any kind in baseball and having no field, not even a practice field or any players. You know, it, 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 people look at you and say, well, how in the world, you know? People said to me, uh, I, I, you can't, it can't succeed. You don't have a snowball's chance in hell, you know, of that ever happening. Well, the bottom line is that we gave ourselves an opportunity by coming there to do something, and that's what we have in this great country is opportunity. So. The, the thing was that we had something that we saw and a vision that we had, and our guys bought it. They said, I always believed, focus on what you have, not what you don't have. So they said to me, what in the world could you focus on? You had nothing. <laughs> and I said, I'll tell you one thing we had. I could go in those homes of those players that were coming, prospective guys coming in. Son, you're going to play. We don't have any players. <laughs> so, by golly, we focused on what we had, and we got after it. That's a great recruiting tool. Coach, you guys have to be excited now here in the American. You look around at the facilities, the ballparks, the traditions. You were in a very good conference in the Missouri Valley, but you jumped over to the American Conference and playing a, a very high-quality brand of baseball in this league. Well, I, I, you know, I know we've all been disappointed, you know, at this, at what's happened uh, in the past here in the last few years. But, uh, you know, I, I Todd's a great guy. He's, a, he's done a good job of recruiting. They brought in some really good players. Then last year, you know, we had 11 guys drafted off that team. And, uh, you know, it looks like we've got a guy that's uh, having a little injury problem right now, maybe. Uh, Barnhouse has had a back problem. And he d he's not really throwing it today as hard as he normally throws. So I anticipate that maybe, yeah, they're going to make a change. So... You know, that's uh, unfortunate, but we got the lead, so now we've got to hang on. Well, now you got to rely on your bullpen. They'll get the early call, and you've been around a, plenty of conference tournaments. These things happen in tournaments. And the fun thing I think about league championships, Coach, is that you can got, have a guy that flies under the radar maybe all season long, doesn't have a lot of innings at bats, but you go into a tournament 
a lot of people are going to get called on. You got a chance to kind of make a name for yourself. Well, and every one of these guys is ready and excited about being here, and and that's the key. And yes, we've not had a really good season. We've been behind and and you know behind the eight ball all, all year long. But I'll tell you right now, they've got some fine young men in that program, and if they'll just believe in themselves and play aggressively and be confident about what they're doing and go out every day and feel like, you know, we're going to make it work. Sky's the limit. Coach, you're a pretty good athlete yourself. I was reading your bio. I saw you a oh. Hall of Famer at Guthrie High School <laughs> and lettered in two sports in football and baseball. Four. Four. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Get back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and uh, basketball and track, too. So, but, you know, that was a long time ago, and now I wish I could run like I used to run, but <laughs> I can't run a lick. <laughs> well, you certainly did a lot, not only for Wichita State, but the uh, entire sport of college baseball. I know everyone uh, owes you a big debt for what you guys did back in that era to, to put it to where it is now. No, I owe University of Oklahoma, where I was assistant the first five years, and we went to College World Series every year. Uh, awful lot of, uh, I, I owe them an awful lot because Enos Seymour took a chance on a guy coming back from Vietnam in the military to, to uh be an assistant coach for the first time and so that was really a, a special opportunity for us and then the situation arrived at wichita state where we really came in with nothing and and brought it into something of prominence and within a very short time and built one of the greatest facilities still today in in the entire college world so you know it was like i said it, it's been a blessing for us and you know i'm just thankful for the opportunity and, you know, I, I, I always said, you know, if I could afford it, I'd, play, I'd pay them to do it. You know, <laughs> it was just fun. It was a lot of fun, and it's a lot of fun for these guys here right now today. And hopefully they'll come on and, and do a good job the rest of the way today. Coach, we're going to let you go. Enjoy the rest of the game. One thing I want to say before I let you go, still love that you guys wear that script W, the Wichita State. You know the black and gold when you see that hat. You've made it very well, Randable and recognizable. This is our lucky hat. Right. Okay. This is the one that we did, you know, and we still have the go shocks. Back okay. There okay. Back, see, so it's it's uh, something that uh, I decided this was our lucky hat for this tournament. So hopefully it'll car carry us a little further. All right. Coach, thanks so much. We appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Gene Thank Stevenson, you. the Hall of Famer from Wichita State, joining us here on the broadcast. is watching uh, his Shocker program with a 4-2 lead. Here over UConn, again, we are going to go to the bullpen here this afternoon again as he will come out of the ball game and they enjoy a 4-2 advantage here this afternoon. This is game one in winner's bracket Thursday. Again, the teams that win today will get the gay off. They will play on Saturday in the semifinals. And again, thanks to Gene Stevenson for joining us here in the booth. We're joined now by Garrett Walbert, and it's going to be Preston Snavely who comes in now to pitch for the Shockers. What a great guy. He's what a awesome. great interview. And my hand hurts. He's got a strong He's, grip, Jeff. Yeah. Don't get an arm wrestling match <laughs> with uh, Coach Stevens. <laughs> Ground ball through the left side, and the Huskies have the leadoff man aboard. So a 4-2 ball game. Wichita State with the lead here in the top half of the fourth. As was UConn leads it off. Gazzo, his first hit of the day. And that'll bring up Kyler Fetko. He grounded a short in the second inning. So they'll pinch a little bit on the infill, looking for a potential double play. They'll have Wallace playing even with a bag over at third. Preston Snavely, a weekend starter coming in. Only had four relief appearances all year. Strike on the outside, Fedko. He grounded a short in the second inning. Two forty four hitter, two eighteen with runners on base. Leaves it down low. 
Here's another pitcher that didn't face UConn in the regular season. He made five starts in conference play, but near the end of the year, he made four relief appearances in a row, so more of a stopper at the end of 2019's regular season. Well, don't let anybody ever tell you you can't make something out of nothing because that's exactly what he did. It's so funny to hear because I've talked to Ron Polk, the former Mississippi State and Georgia coach, mostly known for, for State, and now uh, we've talked the past two years. Haley caught up with Coach Stevenson last year. Hearing those old stories before facilities were anything in college baseball when you would just line a field sometime. Here's a high fly ball in the left field. Slavens in front of the warning track. Makes the play, and there's one out. You hear stories about, you know, we, we had a backstop, two standalone dugouts, and we had a snow fence. And if I had a powerful <laughs> team, I would move it in one year and move it back the next year. He's talking about moving flatbed trucks and throwing the, uh, probably not even the aluminum bleachers, probably the old wood bleachers on top of those things. You, you work with what you've got, you know, and to, and to be able to take it from nothing into seven College World Series appearances, the 1989 national title, just somebody that I look up to a hell of a lot. So one on, one out. Well, someday we're going to be up here swinging a miss, and it's going to be a long time from now, but someday, because he is so successful, talking about, remember when you guys used to play at J.O. Christian Field, Coach Penders, and now look at this ballpark exactly. that, that you got built back in, in 2020, and you opened it up there. But uh, I think it's going to be quite a while till we have Coach Penders up here talking about when he used to coach the UConn Huskies. A lot of experience in this league, a lot of great coaches, 0-2. There's Coach Penders. Won the 2016 tournament championship. Closed out the Big East tournament title here in 2013 before the American was formed and won that championship. Played for the title last year. No and two, and he sends that one in the right field. Let's see if Gazzo makes the turn. He'll just jog into second base. Tying Ron on board now here for Langer, who popped up the second in the second inning. Fantastic at bat by Chris Winkle. He thought breaking ball, recognized it, went down and got it. Just waited on the 77 mile an hour pitch and moves the runner over. So a 4-2 Wichita State lead. Getting one of the top half of the fourth. This is game one of two games we will have today. We talked about what happens to the winners. If you fall on this game, you come right back tomorrow for elimination Friday. was so interesting. I was talking last night when I bumped out of here, and I think we talked about it a little bit in that first game before Jeff Sharon came over for the UCF Memphis game. There's a strike. The motivation is to win, get to the weekend, play, and win a championship, but the secondary motivations, we heard Tulane cheering for a, another day of per diem the other night. Uh, yesterday, ECU was playing not to bus back to Greenville. <laughs> they were wanting the flight, so you got to win a game to get to at least Friday so you can fly back home. There's always those little secondary nuggets out there for you. Time calling at the plate. I thought it was funny the way that Coach Stevenson talked about, hey, if I could afford it, I'd pay to coach this <laughs> game, kind of in a self-deprecating way. But I remember 10 years ago, the comedian Billy Crystal came to Tampa to spring training with the Yankees, you know, worked out with the team, took some cuts. We'll see this last pitch. Down and out, that'll just miss. I asked him after he worked out with the Yankees, you know, talk to me about the money exchange between you and George Steinbrenner, the owner. And he goes, there was a significant amount exchanged. I'll be making payments for years. <laughs> he worked out with them several times in spring training. Didn't he actually get a plate appearance in a spring training game? Yeah. yeah was, that's awesome. And then, of course, there was a media horde around him after right. the game in the Yankees' first base <laughs> dugout. One 
One one outside and so the advantage to Langer who again is 0 for 1 today. 202 but 231 with runners in scoring position. Well, unfortunately, injuries happen, Jeff, yeah. and to lose your starter just two innings in, and he was up on the hill, but I don't think he could take it anymore, you know, and Coach Stevenson tipped us off to the fact that he was dealing with a back issue. Hope that young man is okay. Tough to be doing so well against a quality team like UConn and not be able to go run back out there. Barnhouse, three innings, two hits, two runs, both earned. He walked two, struck out two, 47 pitches. Most importantly, 30 to 47 were for strikes. He was really pounding the zone today. Up and out his velocity, according to Coach Stevenson, who has seen him a lot more than we have, was down from what he's seen in the past. But he did a good job to work around it. He was mixing his speeds, moving the ball all over the plate. That's always, I think, I think you can tell how good a guy is pitching when he doesn't have his best stuff. A lot of people can throw, but can you pitch? And Barnhouse is a big guy. 6'3", 210, long frame, long delivery to the plate. Now the base is loaded, and the Huskies are threatening to put up a big inning. Only one out. And Chiaviti, the junior, who flew to right field an inning ago. And, boy, what an opportunity for a guy hitting just 105 this year. And he may be seeing a new pitcher. They're going to come out, talk it over to Snavely real quick, and they're looking out there. Another right-hander is starting to warm over the left field wall. They've gone primarily right-handers today with Barnhouse, Snavely. We'll try and get a number on who has gotten up and started doing, oh, calisthenics. Shocker's going to send, uh, boy, they're emptying out of the dugout now. They've got about a half dozen guys making their way out to left field, so they'll get in the bullpen and they will begin to work. Meanwhile, Manny Gonzalez is on his way out to the mound. He'll speed things up on the mound. So the tight run at second base, that is Winkle. Go ahead, run Langer over at first, and you still have Paul Gazzo at third base. Left-hander digs in. Here's the pitch. That one's grounded foul. Plenty to cheer about early on if you're a Wichita State fan, but they've run into a little turbulence here in the top of the fourth inning. Cats be a little bit to the left and center. 0-1, framed but just out of the zone. It'll be 8-9-1, Cats v. Van Boren Boyer coming up for Wichita State in the bottom half of the fourth. Snavely rang up wins. He had a start and a win against Memphis. Also versus Grand Canyon University and against Bethune-Cookman. All of those were starts. 1-1. One, one. Back to our left. One UConn has already left two on through three-plus innings. Now with the bases loaded. Definitely trying to come through with the big hit. Maybe tie up this ball game. Here it is. Swing. Animus. Two outs. And that's going to be first strikeout for Snavely. 
Just two strikeouts in the ball game for the UConn offense. John Topa started the ball game off with a K. Here he does. Comes back to the plate. Walked it inning ago and would score the RBI single by Woodworth. He's talking about keeping the momentum if he gets out of this bases loaded jam. They've taken the 4-2 lead and there is a strike called. And bases loaded, two away now after the strikeout. Now whether or not he was scheduled to throw out of the pin today or not, it's Navely thrown into a pressure situation early in this ball game with Barnhouse having to come out. Took the bound to start the inning. Did not throw a pitch. The back, as Garrett, you mentioned, uh, Gene Stevenson kind of let us know about, acted up on him. At least that's the early indication, one and one. Ground ball to the right side. That gets past O'Brien. One run's going to score. Two runs will score. Van Voren having trouble picking it up, so they're going to score a third run as it comes in the second. So Topa with the single to right field will clear the bases. Check the replay. He has over 200 hits in his career. Put another one on the pile. This one sneaks past the first baseman and just misplayed there. That allows another run to come across, and then Jim Penders all the way down the line, close to the plate, waving him on the slide in. They'll not only tie it up, but take the lead. A 5-4 Husky lead now with Topa, who stole a base earlier, standing at first. And there's a high fly ball in the left. Slavens will give way to Catsby, and that will end the inning. But a big, a two-out hit by Toba that clears the bases. Three runs on three hits. No errors. There's one left on. It's 5-4, UConn. Are you mine? Gatorade Zero. All the electrolytes, zero sugar. Get more out of zero. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is the means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Powerful mind. And if he keeps pitching the way he has the last few outings, Penders has total confidence in his pitcher, even after a tough start today. Thank you very much, Haley. Cats be hit by a pitch, and so the leadoff man aboard for Wichita State on a free base. That brings up David Van Voren, the freshman who had a two-run single in the second inning. No one just comes inside, grazes the top half of his thigh, puts him on base with nobody out. And that's officially our first <laughs> hit batter of the game on this side. Well, that's our first official hit batter. Had the one reviewed earlier, but Haley Outen, you've got a little information on some hit batters. So interestingly enough, for Wichita State this season, they have set a single season program record for hit by pitches. They're, that was their 81st of the year. 
you, you always want records, and I always said this, uh, whether it's uh, Wichita State or college or Don Baylor, the uh, longtime major leaguer that was infamous. He, uh, I think, led at one point, maybe still does, all time being hit by a pitch. Cool record, but you're not going to ask me to stand in there. That's not the record <laughs> I want to have. No, thanks. <laughs> You got to tip your cap to the guys that have guts to hang out there and, and take the free base like that. Squares the bunt, pushes it just to the right side. That'll get the runner over. Nice job by Van Voren. One three sacrifices, second productive plate appearance of the day, and that puts the Tiger on at scoring position for the top of the order and Jordan Boyer. If I'm remembering my baseball history correctly, Craig Biggio passed up Don Baylor. Okay. I only know that because I grew up an Astros right. fan. But again, you know, to own that kind of record, I mean, the guys should all get together and take a picture of their bruises, <laughs> hang it up on the wall at X Stadium. I bet at one point it looks like, you know, the new deal on sports medicine is cupping. You see all the little circles on people's back. Nobody's tougher than this team. Drives it into right field, Fedco. A couple of steps back. That's the second out. Runner's going to tag up and jog into third base. So two away on the fly ball to right field. Luke Ritter had a big two-run double on the second. This one gets out there far enough that the runner can tag from second to third. Catsby will do just that. Gets it into the cutoff, man, but no throw coming to the hot corner. So let's go ahead and put Ritter over at first base. So the second walk for Ritter, this one intentional, third time he's been on today, and they'll take their chances with Mason O'Brien. Pop up the center and uh, ground out the second. And he got him in the arm. And they are going to put him at first. Jim Penders will come out of the Yukon dugout first base side and said, I, I, I don't know if I saw an attempt to get out of the way there. He's arguing either lack of attempt or, you know, the new rule. You may be able to explain it better, but in the plane of the plate this year, they can actually, if they want to, in a determination, call you out at the plate in that instance. Still talking with the umpires. There's Fioli looking on. They want to take a look at this one. Now, here's a judgment call at the plate by the home plate umpire. He sent the runner down to first base. That would load the bases. They'll have a chance to overturn this if they see it differently. But they have made the decision that the batter no longer owns the batter's box. You know, if you're going to lean into, not, not necessarily leaning into something, but if you don't make an attempt to get out of the way, you're not going to get your free pass. This will be the second time a hit batsman has been reviewed in this game. They found, of course, earlier that a hit did not happen off Fiole on a right-handed batter. So there's no doubt he got hit, but what they want to determine, did he make any, any effort to get out of the way, or is that elbow hanging out in the plane? I don't think it... Well, it's going to be close to being in the plane. Let's talk about how fair that is, though, because if he's able to pick that ball up out of Fioli's hand that it's one of those curving, breaking balls, he's got to go with it if he's going to attempt right. to swing at it. You're not going to allow a guy to make a move towards a ball. He decided not to swing at it. It hit him. You take a closer look. I think the call is going to stand. If it does, the bases are loaded with stand. two outs for Paxton Wallace, who struck out, and it's going to stand. Bases loaded here with two away in the fourth inning, bottom of the fourth. And now Wichita State a chance to tie it up or maybe even regain a lead. Haley, they keep adding to that record. This is pretty impressive they're able to do that. <laughs> Paxton Wallace. Over two. He's grounded out the third. He is struck out today. So Ducks on the pond for Paxton Wallace. It's 286 with two outs in an inning. That one is up and out 400 with the bases loaded this year, 253 overall. Wallace, 12 doubles, nine home runs. He's got the ability to put four on the board really quick. 
checks it into the net. Viola working at 91 miles an hour on the fastball there. Takes a deep breath. He's ready to work to his battery mate, Winkle. Kicks high, and that one's fouled off to the right side. You, know, you take a look at Fioli's record on the year three and three. He didn't start the year healthy. Missed the first couple of weeks due to a tricep injury. He was finally able to come back from that and has excelled since. One, two, up and out. He had preseason All-American recognition by Collegiate Baseball, the National Collegiate Baseball Writers Association, and D1 Baseball. So <laughs> the preseason conference pitcher of the year, secrets out on him. Sorry. Swing and a miss, and we welcome our viewers back on. A little technical issue to Facebook, but glad to have you back as they strike out Wallace in a big pitch by Fioli. No runs, no hits. There were no errors. Three left on base still. 5-4 UConn. This is St. Pete Clearwater. Home to Clearwater Beach, the number one beach in the U.S. as chosen by travelers on TripAdvisor. It's not just white sand and golf breezes. Beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast. Visit stpclearwater.com. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. Well, Shocker fans enjoying this Florida sun on a Thursday afternoon as more and more fans will start making their way down here for Memorial Day weekend. And if you really want to enjoy yourself, you're going to come out this weekend. That's the place to go. Frenchies in left field is open. The big Tiki Hut. If you want some sun, sit into those uh, bar stool chairs, about four rows of them. Great place to enjoy the ball game. Get a nice little breeze today as well. Michael Woodworth will lead things off here in the fifth inning. So takes a ball to start things off. Woodworth put together a very nice senior campaign, a California native, team leader with 69 hits, 52 runs scored, 19 multi-hit games. One for two. That comes inside, nearly caught him. Flow to center, the first RBI single on the third. As good as he's been, though, a little quiet to start things off in Clearwater. 0 for 4 yesterday. Did have that nice RBI single in the third. Well, UConn really got cranked up offensively an inning ago once the Shockers were forced to go to the bullpen in an injury situation. Got the bases loaded with one out, nearly got out of it, but John Topa, a three-run single to right field to clear the bases. 2-1, fouled it off right side. So Preston Snavely back out for his second inning of relief. They have a right-hander warming in the pin. That's Miller Plyman, number 21. And I think that's smart, you know. You're, you lose your starter after three innings. Got to have somebody there as an escape valve, just in case. Up and in, and that got him up high as he is down at home plate. I looked initially, that got him on the shoulder and the back, may have ricocheted off the helmet, or may have got him square in the helmet. It happened so fast. But Jim Penners and the training staff, they got to come down and check on him. Snavely's fastball got away from him, 89 miles an hour there on the hit by pitch. Looks like he's 
going to be up. They'll check on him, and he's going to go down to first. Sometimes just more the shock of the situation. 89 miles an hour, obviously, coming in there pretty good. Now it got him right in the helmet. Really hope that Woodworth is okay. Staying in the ball game, and they'll give him some time as he walks down to first base. You lose one of your premier hitters and your starting second baseman. That could be a really tough out. Good thing he turned his head. Yeah. You know, a lot of major league batters wear that face guard that comes around and covers your chin. We've seen a couple of teams, and other the Memphis Tigers now have gone to that, where they will all wear the not not quite quite as long as when Terry Steinbach with the A's wore his around the chin. I believe UCF may have been wearing them last night. I'm not positive I remember, but starting to see that become just a natural part of the batting helmet in college. In fact, you see it right here uh, as Pat Winkle will come up. We'll take a look at it here in a second. But they are going to come out and talk to Snavely. That may do it for him as well. So the hit batter puts a runner on, and they are going to go to the bullpen. So he lasted just a little over an inning. Wasn't expected to be in the game this early. But he is out here in the fifth. 5-4, UConn. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is our backyard. This is home. This is Yukon. in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, or a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. There is power in the sportsmanship that is displayed across the American. Power is respecting opponents, officials, student-athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. The American, power for life. Kind of a short outing for Snavely, but it was also a surprise, at least the timing of it, because of the injury to Barnhouse. So he lasts one inning, three hits, three runs, two earned, one walk, and one strikeout in 27 pitches. They will go to the bullpen now here in the fifth inning and we will see Miller Plyman. Plyman, six foot four, 190 pounds. He's a Fayetteville, Arkansas native. He has made 14 appearances, all of them in relief except for one. He made a start against Omaha earlier this season. No record, one save and a 6.7 ERA. Just 17 innings pitched for Plyman. He's given up 20 hits, 13 earned runs and struck out 11 with 13 walks. Jeff opponents are hitting 290 against him and he will come in here with a runner on after the hit by pitch of Michael Woodworth. Pat Winkle got the leadoff home run of the second. He flew to left in the third. And there's that new brand of helmet, as you see. We were just talking about it before we went to break. A little bit of the chin guard on there, not fully all the way around the chin, but adds a little bit more protection. Doesn't impede the view of the pitcher. Comes down and in, that'll miss for a ball, 1-0. Provide some protection for that cheekbone, eye socket as well. Draw a little contact from a ball. Woodworth, 14 stolen bases this year. He stands over at first base to lead off the inning. Yeah. 
One and oh, swing and a miss. Got long on that one. Plyman, the freshman, has made relief appearances seven times in league play this year, including once at UConn. That was back on March 3rd. Let's take a look. Big hack right there, but Plyman got it by him. He threw a third of an inning of relief, gave up a hit. Everything else was scoreless. Now on 1-1, another long swing, trying to get big. 83 miles an hour on the changeup there by Plyman. So Woodworth stays planted over at first base. One and two, the advantage to Plyman likely to keep Woodworth from taking off here because they can throw a pitch out. He's got a pitch to give away if he wants to. But he does it and he gets the strikeout. Big pitch. So the first batter Plyman faces, he'll ring up. Just the third strikeout by the Huskies offense today. A little out in front of that breaking ball. Powerful cut. Nice job of keeping it low. Paul Gonzo, the designated hitter, one for two, struck out of the second, singled and scored a run in the fourth. Right-hander versus right-hander. That one will come down and in. Gazzo, 291, 267 with runners on base. Four homers. He's driven in 12. Shockers look for two on the infield. Off speed again, dropped it to 77, swing and a miss. Well, Plyman, at least through the first two batters, really working that off speed stuff. I think the big bonus for him is that it looks the same as the fastball coming at the batter. Tough to pick up. 1 1. Got him again. Now you're starting to see a little bit of frustration as Paul Gazzo looks into his dugout. Oh, a nice drop there. Down and in. About a normal lead for Woodworth at first. Plyman's pitch called strike three. So back to back strikeouts for Plyman out of the bullpen. Plyman with 11 strikeouts on the year coming in. Paints the corner. That's a pretty pitch, one you can't lay off of. Kyler Fedko wanted to go talk to Jim Penders. They're not going to give him that offensive timeout, so he'll have to get right back into the hitter's circle and into the batter's box. He's over two, a ground out to short and a fly out to seven today. Fedko over two, hitting 242, but really good with a pair of outs when he hits 318. Fedko digging into the very back of the batter's box. I don't know if that's going to work against him with all these off-speed pitches coming. Breaking ball to call and strike of the knees. Dials it back down to 77 miles an hour there. Fedco, such a powerful build. Got to make sure you don't give him anything to elevate towards left field. Well, it's been a steady diet of off-speed pitches and a few sliders chunked in there. Haven't seen him trying to, like, really run in on anyone yet. There it is. And he just gets it fair down the right field line. Woodward around second. He's on his way to third. Here comes the throw, and it'll be cut off. It was a wide turn at third by Woodward, but they'll jam on the brakes, and Fedgo has a two-out double. Challenged him here with the fastball. Comes back in on the right-hander's bat, and it just plops down foul. Extra bases with two outs for the Huskies. Fedco now with 10 doubles on the season. Two men in scoring position for Chris Winkle. Winkle Wink. is yet to be retired in today's game. 
walk and a single has also scored a run. Could give the Huskies just a little bit of breathing room. Not much, but a little bit with a hit here. Could give them a three-run lead. The 246 hitter stands in, and it's down and away for a ball. We've had some very competitive ball games to start our tournament. Of course, the first game with UConn beating Houston 4-3 to three on a walk-off. This would be the fourth game decided by three or fewer runs so far. Can't ask for much more than that. Well, Kadena going to go out and talk about this situation with Plyman. You've got Woodworth at third, Fedco at second, two down. Trying to keep it a one-run game. Again, you've got Kadena, Slavens, Sigrist coming up, or Sigrist, excuse me, coming up in the next inning. So that'll be five, six, and seven in the Shocker order. A drive in a center field. That one's going to fall in front of Catsby. Here's the throw. They'll let it come through. Two run score. They're going to have a play at second and they can't pick it up. So it's going to be a two run single for Winkle. The third time he's been on today, Woodworth and Fedco both score on the throw home. Winkle will go to second base and Winkle RBIs 36 and 37. What an impressive piece of hitting. That ball down by his ankles. Went and got it. Drops in front of the center fielder. Both runs aggressively coming home. Throw won't be in time. And moving up on the throw, I think if the catch is a little cleaner, they'd had a chance to tag him. Instead, the inning continues. Seven hits in the ballgame now. Seven runs produced by UConn. So a runner at second, two away. That'll stretch it up to a three-run lead for the Huskies. Right-hander versus the right-hander. Plyman leaves it down. So the book closed down snavely. One inning, three hits, four runs, three earned, a walk and a strikeout. That second run was charged to Plyman. Anything else is going to be on Plyman from here on out. Wano gets him on a strike on the outside at 79. How old school is Langer? Goes up there, no batting gloves. Choked up on the bat a little bit in the last at bat. Maybe rub some dirt on it. That's about it. Go up there, try and make your name known. 1-1 one, one to the third baseman, the junior. Off speed, tried to stop a swing, rolled through it though. Boyer over to first, low throw. Nice job for O'Brien to turn the mid over, and that will end the inning. But the Huskies, fair run, spare hits, no errors. One left on base, the big two run single by Chris Wingle gives UConn a 7 4 lead here in Clearwater. This is St. Pete Clearwater home to 35 miles of white sand bliss. But it's more than emerald surf and gulf breezes. The beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of life, nature, art, music, or whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast in St. Pete Clearwater. Love the beach. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. UConn Huskies with a 7-4 lead here in Clearwater, Florida at the American Baseball Championships presented by Air Force Reserve. Jeff Frywell alongside Garrett Walbert will have game two. 
about 47 minutes after the completion of this ball game. Just two games today, two games tomorrow, then could have two to four on Saturday, then championship Sunday. I really have enjoyed the, the way they have formatted it this year. Still double elimination, still your two pods, still have to get through Saturday to get to a championship, but it relieves a lot of the stress uh, after day one on not only the stadium staff, the American Conference staff behind the scenes, allows you a little leeway if you have some weather, rewards the winners in the tournament. It's just good all the way around. I've said it before. I like the fact that all eight teams are in contention on day one. Let everybody get that chance to get the jitters out, and then the rest of the week you can feel confident about your play. So it is Ross Kadena to lead things off. Kadena today has popped it up the first on two different occasions. Fioli, four innings, four runs, four hits, a pair of strikeouts. 2-1, popped them foul right side out of play. That'll leave it up at 2-2. Two and two. Well, Fioli came in three shy of tying Tim Cates, 270 strikeouts, just two strikeouts early in this ballgame, trying to grind another two out and keep his team in the lead. Wind up at the 2-2, two -two, popped him up on the infield. Prado is going to call everyone off, and there's one out. Fioli's been pretty effective today. He did give up four runs in the bottom of the second, but two shutout innings since then. Fastball's been around 91-92 from the left-hander, and he's really kind of taking control. He was able to strand the bases loaded. I believe Wichita State has already left more than five runners on. That'll put Brady Slavens to the plate. He walked and scored earlier, and there's a strike taken on the inside. Slavens again hit his first career home run on Tuesday. Now one from the left-hander. It wasn't about till maybe 10, 11 years ago that we saw the trend of high school seniors graduating just before Christmas and then enrolling in college early. We saw a lot of it in college football. It's much more prominent now. 1-1, one, one, chops it high. Going to be a tough play. Woodworth, and he misses the target, and that will get into the dugout. So not only is he going to get first, he gets out of play, and Slavens is going to be at second base with one out. Slavin's one of those players who graduated high school early playing for a big-time Division I program in what should be his senior spring. The throw over by Woodworth had to be quick, pulls the first baseman off the bag, it gets into the dugout. Now runner in scoring position. You know, Slavin's his old high school teammates and buddies could be watching the uh, – the feed right now on the American Digital Network, you know, they're thinking about graduating and thinking about prom and all those kind of things in the spring. He's on second base in Clearwater <laughs> trying to win a title. Meanwhile, his friends try not to let the teachers hear the audio. <laughs> not getting in trouble. Make sure you got your earbuds in. It's a lot easier to, hey, it's a lot easier for those high school kids to do that now. They've got the remote earbuds. You don't have to put the earbud in behind your jacket, hunch down in the seat at study hall to listen to a ball game like I allegedly had to do. 0-1 in the dirt. I'm sure I have an old Walkman somewhere. Some big <laughs> fuzzy headphones, probably orange, purple. Now the runner leads at second. Segrist takes it down and in. Now he's ahead. Eighty pitches now for Fioli. Segrist, the freshman out of Plano, Texas. Yesterday, one for four, had his first hit in the tournament. Already won today. Two one up and out. That one again, ninety one miles an hour from Fioli.
There is a base hit into right field. That'll get past the diving Winkle. Slavens is going to score easily. Here comes the throw to second, gets away. And so Segrist gets a hustle double. And what he didn't see is that third base was unoccupied. Would have had a good chance maybe to go there, but look, it's better to be safe than sorry and stay on second base and not have two outs. He turned the corner at first base and the right fielder almost already had the ball. You kind of hold your breath as the staff thinking, oh, guy drove in the run and now he's toast at second. But the throw was not able to be fielded cleanly. Got away into shallow left field. So a little bit of fortune there for Wichita State. They'll close it to a two-run game. And now if Segrist gets in, it's a one-run contest. Catsby has been hit. He has walked. So no at-bat today in two plate appearances. 268. Swing and a foul ball straight back. Catsby, 268, two homers, 21 driven in. Fourth double of the year for Segrist. And that'll be nine RBI. Shockers trying to rally midway through the game. Flash it out there. Yanks it back in the dirt. Now three lead changes so far in this game. We're a little over halfway through. Breaking ball under the knees. And Fioli. Not bad today, but not quite as sharp as at least you and I have seen him in the past. Trying to grind through this, trying to get another inning or two with a two run lead. Fouled back. Two and two. On this winner's bracket Thursday, we're down to six teams remaining here at the American Championships. We'll still be at six after today. There's called strike three, and that is going to be the third strikeout of the game for Mason Fioli, and that will tie him with Tim Kate with 270 strikeouts at UConn. Former teammate Tim Kate, Kate who was part of the program from 2016 to 18, helped these Huskies play in two tournament title games, won the 2016 title. Perfect pitch, easy ring up there. Well, Fioli just a junior, Kate did it in a three-year span as well from 16 to 18. Here is Van Voren, two run single and a sacrifice, but takes a ball. You think about the arms that have come through this program under coach Jim Penders. He's had 47 players drafted since he came through, including some big names. Last year, Tim Kate drafted, P.J. Poulin, then the position player, Zach Susi. But four first round picks, including Matt Barnes and Anthony Kay. That one laced foul at third base, one and one. And when you can get talent like that, make them all play together, that's why the NCAA tournament appearances have started to add up. That's why the tournament titles have added up. Really nice run for the Huskies, and it's been enjoyable to watch for Jim Penders over the years. First time I saw his team play in action was 2007, Key Span Park up in Brooklyn where the Cyclones play. They made the tournament title game there back in the old Big East, and they're in the semifinals every year. 1-1, one, one, down and in. Nice save by Winkle. It would be neat to see a crowd shot of that new ballpark in stores. The first year that Coach Penners has another one of his really good teams vies for a regional host. And they can announce welcome to the whatever NCAA regional in stores, Connecticut. Elliott Field. Yep. 
C.J. Dandeno, the reliever, number 39, a senior, has gotten up. He started to warm over the left field wall. They've got a left-hander up as well now. Caleb Worcester, who we saw in the first game, also up. Hitters count to Van Voren. Just a 179 hitter with a pair of outs. And he drives that one in the left center field. It's a long way to go. And he reaches up and what a grab by Topa. Shows the umpire the glove and that will end the inning. One run, one hit. There was an error and a runner left on base. UConn still leads it seven to five. We all dream about our next vacation, but some of us turn those dreams into action. The bookers, the doers, they hit that confirmation button and let's go. Because bookers know that the perfect place to stay is right there for the booking. Be a booker at booking.com, the world's number one choice for booking accommodations. Fourth straight year. Hueso from 30. Unbelievable. And be able to celebrate this type of championship. There's the record breaker. They are the champions of the American. Wind continues to blow in. It's picked up a little bit here in Clearwater last night in that Memphis UCF ball game, Garrett. I thought it was crazy how the first three innings had a nice little breeze blowing in then all of a sudden the fourth inning it didn't gradually become a gust it almost instantly <laughs> became a gust and then the kind of the fireworks started there in the fourth inning last night balls got up in the air and started traveling out of the ballpark and we had a lot of offense made it a fun game to watch you see 95 degrees beautiful sunny day I'm sure all the snowbirds taking notice up north following their programs great area to spend your Memorial Day weekend Michael Chiavini, the center fielder, over two, flew out to right in the 30 with strikeout in the fourth inning. And a 7 5 UConn lead. You know, Jeff, it's almost a shame that last catch by Topa in left field was to end the inning and we didn't get a chance to see it again. But if he doesn't make that catch on the run, it's a tie ball yeah. game. Two runs would have come around to score. One and one. As Plyman staying out on the mound, that was. I've been, out. I've been impressed by Wichita State today, Garrett. You're the eighth seed. You get a big upset win on day one sometime. It's not that you rest on that, but there's so much excitement, then it's hard to generate things back. Second ball game. They've, they've come to play today. They're very much in this game, just down two to Jim Penders and the UConn Huskies, and that's uh, the most experienced coach in this league. Well, for the Shockers, they've been in Tampa Bay for a week. You know, they went to the season-ending series against USF over in Tampa, won the first game, and won the final game with the eighth seed on the line. 2-2 two, two, as he sails that one to the backstop. But we talked about that coming into that first matchup. How many times have you seen a wild card team in the big leagues have to fight just to get into the playoffs, and that's the wild card team. I know the Giants won the World Series twice as a wild card. I think there's been three wild card teams that have won World Series. There's something to be said not clinching early and being able to just rest before the playoffs mentally and have to really grind out. They were already in tournament mode coming into this week. Swing and a miss. Riding that momentum, and it's certainly been in their favor so far. Strikeout for Plyman. John Topa is one for two, a strikeout, a walk, and a single. Here's the pitch and the dirt. Topa 322 this year, four homers and 30 driven in. Yeah. 
And the 1-0 is a strike on the inside. Plyman, a freshman for Wichita State. He's made 13 relief appearances this year. Four times he's gone two or longer, two innings or more. They'd love to stretch him out and keep him as effective as he can be for as long as he can stand to be on the hill. High fly ball in the center. That's got some carry. Catsby makes the turn. Any other part of the park, that one might have had a shot, but with the wind blowing through the flags in right center field coming into our ballpark, that knocked it down considerably for Topa. Anthony Prado, the shortstop over three, a ground out, a couple of flyouts to left and to center. He did a nice job with Catsby does there. You don't see a lot of players do that anymore. They'll camp up under the ball, but Catsby made sure to race back. That way he can make his way back toward the infield. Right-hander versus right-hander. Works the slider at 78 miles an hour for a strike. Boyer, Ritter, O'Brien, top of the order coming up for Wichita State. In the bottom of the sixth. Base hit, rolls it up the middle. Nice job with two outs and Prado on for the first time today. Pretty impressive streak this year for Staten Island's finest. Anthony Prado has now reached base safely in 54 of 57 games, Jeff. Good things will happen when you have base runners. Michael Woodworth, one for two, an RBI signal on the third. He was hit by a pitch, scored a run last inning on the hit by Winkle. Righty, righty. And that one's in the dirt. They're going to try to run on the dirt ball, and he's got him by a mile. They're trying to run on Kadena on a dirt ball, but not a big enough jump, and Ritter was waiting with the ball as Prado just jogged in and took the tag to end the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base. Still 7-5, UConn. Here comes the top of the order for the Shockers. Gatorade Zero. All the electrolytes, zero sugar. Get more out of zero. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is the means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Well, the day is done there for Mason Fioli. He had a grind through five innings, five hits, five runs, four earned, four walks, three strikeouts, and a wild pitch. He hit two batters, 91 pitches, 53 strikes. Didn't have his best stuff today, but he was able to get him a solid five innings, keep him in play for the win as Jim Penners will go to the pen. It'll be C.J. Dandeno, the six-foot-one redshirt senior. Dandeno, four and one on the year. 27 appearances, all of them in relief. He does have one save and a 2.2 ERA. Very effective up there on the hill. In 44 innings pitched, he's given up just 35 hits and only 11 earned runs. He struck out 57. Opponents are hitting just 223 against Dandino, who transferred in from LaSalle. He will finish his career out with UConn this year. He'll face the top of the order in Boyer, Ritter, and O'Brien. They have reached base four times between that trio. We'll have an interesting matchup coming up. 47 minutes of the completion of this one. Cincinnati and Tulane. Cincinnati, a winner on day one over the Memphis Tigers. Tulane, a winner on day one in a ball game where we thought we were going to have a ton of offense the first three innings. It was 5-2. It, was it stayed that score in Tulane. 
Got the 136 pitch performance, complete game by Kyle Roper, in which could have been his last collegiate game. He's had some nice performances in this tournament as well. We'll talk a little bit more about those tonight for the Green Wave. And pardon me, that is a five-year career for C.J. Dandino. Went to LaSalle High School. Five years in stores and a lot of wins popped up. That one is belted in the left field. That's going to be fair. That's going to get down to that little triangle. Bounces away from Topa. That's going to be a leadoff double as Boyer comes jogging in to second. And the Shockers. Now have the tying run of the plate in the all covered second baseman, Luke Ritter. First extra base hit since much earlier in the game turns on the first offering by Dandeno and just punishes it down into the left field corner. Got into second base, standing up. Ritter with a two-run double today. He's one for one, 340 on the year. Nine homers, 39 driven in. He's been walked and intentionally walked. Ritter, nine home runs, 15 doubles, 16 doubles after that one he hit in the second. Dandino, right to the plate. Called strike at 79 miles an hour. Dandino threw an inning and two thirds of relief against Wichita State on May 3rd. Gave up a hit, kept it scoreless, struck out three. Second time he's faced them this year. Boy, you're a pretty good lead on the secondary at second base. Right around the same pitch, the exact same pitch, this time 80 miles an hour, same result called strike. O2 offering. Comes in, swing, and he misses, but it's going to go to the backstop. Check swing, and that kind of got Winkle crossed up with Dandino, and so everyone is safe. Boyer goes to third. Ritter, a strikeout wild pitch. He stands at first. So runners of the corners, nobody out. So Ritter's been on four times. So you've got Boyer at third, Ritter at first. With more on those two is Haley Outen. The two leaders of this Wichita State team are on base. Boyer, more of that vocal, energetic guy in the dugout, picking up his teammates when they're down. However, Luke Ritter, he's the other leader on this team, but he's been more of a lead-by-example type, not quite as vocal as Jordan, but in their own way, these two lead this team. Up and out here to Mason O'Brien. Flew to center, he grounded his second, also hit by a pitch. Tying run at first base in Ritter. Ritter with 12 stills. They may try to get him in a scoring position here with O'Brien at the plate. That's a strike, pounded on the inside. Even to that, but one of one came in at 91 miles an hour. You can tell Coach Penders means business for UConn, bringing in Dandino, third all-time in appearances at UConn, one of his more veteran players to bring in out of the pen, hoping he can close things out with nobody out and runners on the corners now. That one cap foul straight back. And so now Dandino is ahead. Dandino waits, ground ball to the right side. That'll get a run in. They're going to go to second. Do they get it? No, the ball comes loose. There it goes right into third. Still nobody out. Boyer comes in a score. Ritter goes first to third. O'Brien stay from the fielder's choice. And likely going to be an error issued on the Woodworth throw to Prado that got away and put Ritter at third. You know, Garrett at first, I thought, as we take a look at this, he would take the safe out over at first base. Makes the turn, wants to cut down the lead runner. You've already got one run coming to cross. Not a bad thought, but just got signals crossed up. Maybe it hit him when that ball got in. 
Going to make it a one-run ball game. At 7-6, tying run, 90 feet away. O'Brien, the go-ahead run, and here's the cleanup man, Paxton Wallace, who is 0 for 3 as the UConn bullpen looks on in left field. Coach McDonald talking with his infield. Probably exhorting them to play UConn ball. So a run in the fifth, a run in the sixth by Wichita State after that big explosion in the second when they played it four runs. Right back in this ball game. Paxton to Wallace over three, a pair of strikeouts and a ground out. 276 this year. 12 doubles, nine homers, and 35 driven in. He's not looking for anything big here. There's nobody out. He wants to get a ball and play up the middle or into the outfield. Even a double play ties the ball game up. Won't get him the RBI, but he could get Ritter in from third. Swing and a miss way out in front of that one at 80 miles an hour. Wallace had the big day against ECU. Two for five. Had a double, an RBI, two runs scored. Great opportunity here with men on. O'Brien at first. Here's the 0-1, left it upstairs. Well, O'Brien just one stolen base on the year, so I highly doubt they're going to risk it out out at second, even though you've got a runner at third. They'll trade the run for the two outs, even though it'll tie the ball game with Prado and Woodworth playing back up the middle. In the dirt, and I say that time by Winkle. Draw, well, trying to fool Ritter there, if you notice the little look back to the backstop. Mm -hmm. Wallace listed at 6'1", 215 pounds out of Greenbrier, Arkansas. His father, Mike Wallace, played quarterback for the University of Central Arkansas. He is in his second season. Two one, popped it up right side, foul territory. Winkle finds the perimeter, but it's going to get a few rows up there behind the first base dugout. So two and two on Paxson Wallace, Ross Cadena on deck, who is 0 for three. So Ritter down the line at third, O'Brien over at first. Righty, righty matchup. Swing and a miss. So one away in the inning now. Double play can get you out with some damage control and just one run. Kadena, it's been in the air three times, but all three times he's been in the infield. Second strikeout of the inning by Wichita State's offense. Outside and low. That ball just broke away from the right-hander. Pretty pitch. Bottom of the six getting a little bit late in the ball game. Be a good time for the Shockers to come through here with a man on third. Another on first. Langer will come in at third. He'll stay next to Ritter. They're going to lay down a safety squeeze, and they're going to have Ritter in a rundown. He came down a little bit too far. Langer throws, and they'll tag him out. Runner is, oh, they're going to have a double rundown. We might have a double play here. Racing out there, the throw, and the tag, and one of the strangest double plays I've ever seen, double rundown to get him out of the inning. Chris Winkle makes the great decision to curve back around towards second. Let's watch this play from start to finish. The throw down to third will cut down their lead runner. Winkle applies the tag and watch him curve up towards second base. He's going to create the force there. Center fielder comes in and the tag applied. Wow, Jeff. This is St. Pete Clearwater, home to Clearwater Beach. The number one beach in the U.S. is chosen by travelers on TripAdvisor. It's not just white sand and golf breezes. Beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast. 
visit safetyclearwater.com. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. There's Frenchies in left field, a great place to grab a drink, watch the afternoon game. I might need a drink to figure out all the numerical combinations that <laughs> UConn needed to get that double play on the double rundown. They found a way to do it. Pretty impressive, though. The catcher ends up making the final play, throws it over to second base, and he's 10 feet from the bag. Covered a lot of ground, but got it done. Well, Chris did the smart thing when they had those guys log jammed at second base. He didn't just panic and throw it he ran at the runner made sure they were bunched up so double run down double play but Wichita State got another run and makes it a one run ball game so the Huskies are going to have the heart of the order Woodworth Winkle and Gazzo three four and five here in the top half of the seven this has been a very entertaining ball game this afternoon to say the least as Wichita State He is going to the bullpen. So as happens in tournaments, people scatter for jerseys. And it's going to be Lemon. I believe we saw him on Tuesday. We did. He threw one inning in the ball game against ECU. Walked one, he struck out one through 17 pitches and in fact picked up his first save of the year. So it's going to be Jacob Lindemann coming in to throw. And he'll deliver a strike and it's quickly 0 and 1 here to Woodworth. Woodworth today is one for two. Flew out, RBI signal, he's been hit by a pitch. Lindemann, 6'3", 205 pounds, a sophomore out of Burlington, Wisconsin. Now 1-2 as Lindemann works ahead in the count. Winkle on deck, one for three with a homer. Gonzo in the hole, one for three with a single. As the case, you normally see the jump from freshman to sophomore year. Lindemann last season made just four appearances. He was 1-0, and but this year more than doubles at 13 appearances, 1-0 and again. Fly ball in the left center field, a long way to go, and diving and making an incredible catch in center is Catsby. Caspi had a long way to run. Saw this one well off the bat, though. Nice job by Slavens to give him room to lay out and make the catch. And Winkle hit the leadoff home run in the second. Flew to left on the third. He would strike out on the fifth. That feels good. Stretch your legs a little bit <laughs> late in the game. Get a little sprint in. That's the second time, and obviously they are Coached very well at Wichita State by Todd Butler. Remember, Slavens made the play earlier in left field where he immediately throws the glove up to show the umpire. That time, Catsby makes the dive, shows the glove. You don't see a lot of that. That used to just be the normal thing you did to show the, show the ball in the glove. You don't see it a ton anymore, but uh, those outfielders coach very well. They want to make sure those umpires have no doubt that a ball was that trapped or got away. Winkle, you get one for three, the left-hander, and a 1-1 count. Swing and a miss. Yeah, 
Nobody on, one down. Slavens, Segris, Katsby, six, seven, and eight in the shocker order. Coming to the plate next. Slow roller, hits the bag. What an adjustment by O'Brien. will take it himself. High hop, you never know how it's going to deflect off the bag, but took the high hop. He's there to make it look a lot easier than it was. Rolling, rolling, right into his glove. Nice. Sometimes that's the way it goes. But he put himself in a good position to make the play unassisted. Well, he knew that ball had a chance to hit the bag, I think. He stayed back there and thought, hey, I'm not going to get too close to the bag where if it kicks out left or right, I can't go get it or make a play. He stood far enough back so he could play the carom. First pitch a strike to Gazzo. Gazzo singled back in the fourth inning. Oh, one. Check swing, and that caught a piece of Kadena. Boy, the catchers have had some foul balls and some unfortunate bounces today. Well, they'll let Kadena grab a breath or several. Paul Gazzo in his redshirt sophomore season up to the plate right now. Jeff, you might remember he came off the bench on opening night as this one comes in. And got him right in on his ankle bone, I think. Mm. Got past the guard. Gazzo came in on opening night after Pat Winkle hurt his hamstring. In his first career at bat at UConn, Gazzo hit a go-ahead solo home run over top five Louisville. Lifted the Huskies to a win. He's playing in our first ball game. His brother Sal will play for Tulane in our nightcap. Now well, Kadena's good to go. And even count on Ga Gazzo at one and one. Now falls behind a ball and two strikes. Lindemann with the 91 mile an hour heater. And he's a strike from getting out of the inning now. Wallace has stepped toward the line over at third base. Everyone about normal. Call strike three will end the inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We are through a 7-6 lead for UConn as you're watching the American Baseball Championships presented by Air Force Reserve. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is our backyard. This is home. This is Yukon. Beautiful afternoon here, seven to six, Yukon as we head past the stretch to the bottom of the seventh inning. Wichita State will have Slavens, Segris, and Katsvi do up. Again, they had the late game heroics yesterday and a late one-one game, or Tuesday, excuse me, not yesterday, in the game against ECU. It was one-one going to the eight when Slavens. And the rest of the Shockers got in action. They would put one on the board in the eighth. They put four on the board in the ninth. They held on to win it 6-2 on Tuesday to get the 8-1 upset. They tried for some late game heroics here this afternoon. Slavens popped it up left side. That's going to get out of play. 
In the regular season, these two teams met in Hartford. UConn won the first two games, but Wichita State won the second one pretty convincingly. There you see the Shocker fans who have made the trip down. And you add up all the runs from that three-game series, Wichita State actually outscored UConn 13-11. to You wouldn't expect anything less than a very competitive game against them here, their fourth matchup of the season. No one. Slavin today is one for two with a walk. Singled in the third, walked to the second, reached in the air in the fifth. 0-1 from Dandeno. There's the strike call. Jim Pender started the day with the left-hander, Fioli, going against Wichita State's offense. Now an inning plus of relief by Dandeno. They have another left-hander warming over the wall in the bullpen. I'm thinking he likes the left-handed matchup against this shocker lineup. And Phil back now with two strikes. Waved at it, but not enough. He'll appeal down to Ryan Broussard. He says he's good. Barrel of the bat come all the way around. He did enough to hold up. Good call. So Dan to know another opportunity. Comes in, got him to pop it up. Prado, just outside the infield. Add short. Got him in the air, and there's one up and one down. That's a dangerous bat. They just retired on a pop-up. Nice pitching by Dandeno, not to give him anything to drive. Now Segrist will come to the plate, the DH for the Shockers. 2.56 on the year with no home runs. He is driven in one today, though. Nice afternoon as he's two for three with a single and an RBI double. No home runs on the year for Segrist. Huskies being wild. We'll have six, seven, and eight. Connor Fedko, Chris Winkle, and David Langer. Called strike on the outside. Dropped it to 79 miles an hour. Jack Segrist, just like Brady Slavens and David Van Boren. Freshman getting the start, bottom of the order, and getting it done. Already a pair of hits with that RBI you mentioned. Oh, one. A little more velocity that time. Gets the strike call. Seeger's tails from Plano, Texas. In his high school career at Plano West, he was a perfect game underclass All-American. Oh, 2 called strike three. We started them off speed at 79 and 80. Ran it on the outside at 91 to finish them off. Dandeno with a perfect pitch. Your team trailing by one. Have to let everybody else know that the strike zone has expanded a touch or just let them know that if it's on the outside and close, we've got to go after it. Katsvi is 0 for 1. He's walked, been hit by a pitch. He struck out looking in the fifth. Now heading 267 this year. Two homers, 21 driven in. Little soft liner into right center field, just over Woodworth's head. Nearly made the circus catch. He'll run a little throw behind from Fedco, but Catsby dumps one in just over Woodworth's head. Made a nice run at it. Catsby's made great plays. Slavin's made great plays. Just a, an inch or two away, full extension, and he gets past the webbing of his glove. Glad to see that Woodworth doing okay after taking that ball to the back of his helmet right. earlier in the game. He would later come around to score. Catsby with 12 steals. Van Boren hits with two outs, 259 on the year. Home run 13 driven in with that two-run single back in the second. We'll see if they want to try anything with Catsby to get in the scoring position. There's a strike taken at the knees at 91 miles an hour. Van Voren, also a Texas native by way of Bedford, went to Trinity High School, 6'2", 190 pounds. Oh, 
No one, there goes the runner. It's a pitch out, the throw down to second on the third base side, and that will cost him a out as Catsby dives in with his 13 stolen base. They had the pitch out, but Winkles throw a little bit to third base. Prado try to bring it around, not in time. Now the tying run on second base for Wichita State. Maybe a throw on the right side of the bag. The inning would be over. One one man born just a 172 hitter with two outs but a 400 hitter with runners in scoring position. And the dirt. Winkle out to his right. Two one pitch. High chopper that's going to get over the head of Langer, and this game is going to be tied. Meanwhile, there goes Van Vord in the second, and he is saved with the RBI double. Well, the stolen place pays off big time to get him in scoring position. Just the seventh extra base hit of the year for David Van Voren. But this one takes off like a rocket, gets over the head of Langer. That'll easily drive the run in. He makes the decision to turn on the Jets for second base, and he's got his sixth double of the year. As we go to the top of the order, Jordan Boyer, a chance to give the Shockers the lead. He is one for three. He doubled and scored an inning ago. Down and out to the right side as Winkle makes the save. Wichita State. At the four one second. But doing something we saw UCF do last night when Memphis had the big four run inning early in the game. They've just put one run on the board the last three innings. Chipped away, got the momentum. All of a sudden they find themselves 7 7 tied with a couple of innings to go. Boyer works with a 1 1 count. And Dandino's pitch is a strike. But now Dandino a strike away from getting out of the inning. One, two. He's up to 90 miles an hour, but he'll miss high. Great position for Wichita State to be in. Boyer second on the team in RBIs at the plate battling. Ritter right behind him on deck. Your team leader and runs driven in. Leaves it outside. Dandino really reared back there. It was outside, but 93 miles an hour. Got to respect that type of velocity. So Boyer, the leadoff man, will go up there, trying to put this in play. Three, two, a full count. Popped him up right side. That should get out of play, and it will. Oh, 
We appreciate everyone spending their afternoon with us here on the American Digital Network in what is now a tie ball game. We hope you'll clear your dinner plans as well and come back for game two this evening. It should be a great winner's bracket matchup. The Tulane Green Wave and the upstart Cincinnati Bearcats, the number two seed. So a two versus three matchup, Jeff. Will be a very fun one. Again, they get that day off. Be interested to see if Cincinnati can continue to piece stuff together. Again, you look at a stat sheet, you wouldn't say, hey, this is a two seed, a chance to go to the semifinals, but Coach Guggins has done an outstanding job this year to get that two seed. There's called strike three on the outside. That'll end the inning, but the Shockers are going to tie it up. They get a run. Pair of hits, Stu Ayers, runner left on base. We're ahead of the eight, and it's 7-7 seven, seven at the American Baseball Championships presented by the Air Force Reserve. Opportunities present themselves every day. Opportunities that move us forward. Opportunities to serve our time in your community. Explore your opportunities in the Air Force Reserve. Power comes in all forms. Power is a big tackle, a big save, a clutch hit, or a game-winning shot. Power is also standing up for what is right. There is power in the sportsmanship that is displayed across the American. Power is respecting opponents, officials, student athletes, coaches, and team representatives. Power is not tolerating racial or ethnic comments, profanities, or other improper actions while at the game. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. The American. Power for life. We are tied at seven as we go to the top of the eighth inning here in Clearwater, Florida. And the winner's bracket on Thursday, Lindemann's day has done one inning, no hits, no runs, no walks. He struck out one, nine pitches, seven strikeouts. And Wichita State piecing it together. They we're going to see the fifth pitcher of the afternoon for the Shockers. That'll be Alex Siegel. That'll be his second appearance in as many games here in Clearwater. He earned the win in relief against the league champion ECU Pirates two days ago on the season. This will be his 30th appearance. All have come in relief. He has two saves and a one-and-one one record on the season. 31 and two-thirds innings pitched for Siegel. He's given up 22 hits, 20 earned runs. And Siegel on the year has struck out 41. So effective in relief, opponents are hitting just 188 against him. And he is going to end up facing this inning for UConn. It'll be 6, 7, 8, Fedco, Winkle, and Langer. So these two teams have kind of gone back and forth. Three lead changes, and now we're tied again. At 7-7, seven, seven, almost even on the line score. 7-8-2 and two for UConn, 7-8-1 and one for Wichita State. Wichita State, though, has left nine on, only four left to one today for the UConn Huskies. And the Huskies, four in the second, rather uh, one in the second, one in the third, three in the fourth, two in the fifth. They've gone scoreless the last two innings. Siegel's pitch will be down low. Jeff, I really like the move here by Todd Butler to bring in your leading setup man, the guy that's made the most appearances on the year. He's been very effective for them. Siegel already has a win in this tournament in relief. You know he's ready to throw as long as he needs to to try and get it to your closer, Mitchell Walters. Leaves it up high. Siegel against ECU went an inning and two-third after a fine start by Clayton McGinnis. He went scoreless, hitless, struck out one. So very effective against the league champs. Fedco was one for three, did double in the fifth inning. Down and in. Three and oh, Fedco likely taking all the way. As you mentioned, I think this is the right move. You got a chance here at 7-7. Seven, seven. You got some momentum. If you get the win, you get the day off. And even though the, you're the eight seed, it's a challenge. 75, about 70, 75 percent of doubleheaders are split. So if you go through that percentage on Saturday, you, you feel good about your chances maybe to make it to Sunday. Now you're going to be potentially getting UConn or ECU again. So experienced and very good teams. It'll be a challenge, but 
You'll take your chance as it is a leadoff walk to Kyler Fedko. He's on for a second time now. Leadoff walk. You want to play the percentages. Usually it's going to come around to score. And they're going to come out and talk to Siegel. They're not going to waste any time here. There is a right-hander warming in the pin over the wall and left for Wichita State. I believe that's Mike Pelfrey out there talking with his pitcher. And the young man warming up is Calvin Marley. A four-pitch walk is not what they intended for Kyler Fedko. He resides on first base now. This is an opportunity, though, for Siegel to work the bottom of the order. 7-8-9 and try and keep it a tie ball game. Bring the offense back to the plate in the top of the eighth. That will bring Chris Winkle to the plate. The junior came into today hitting 243. Already has a pair of hits, and this one's fouled at the plate. Shows bunt over to the right side, trying to get that go-ahead run in scoring position, trying to get him on, get him over, get him in. As Winkle fouls the first one off, Winkle has four sacrifice bunts. They have 38 as a team coming into this ballgame. Weren't able to get it down, kind of gave away your strategy, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if they tried again. Well, you just got to make the baseball play. We talked a little bit about yesterday and the day before. You can get a little too cute sometime as he will get up under it and foul it to the right side, trying to angle things, square at the last second. I like the fact that, look, you know it's coming. Let me just square around and get set. Same thing with a pitcher. You know a guy's going to bunt. You're going to dump a couple out of the strike zone, but eventually you're going to have to get it in there. You're going to walk the guy, make the play. Do they trust Winkle with two strikes? Looks like he'll swing away. Down in the dirt as Kadena makes the stop on the left side. Wallace at third base for Wichita State. Still in on the grass, though. Not taking any chances. One and two to Chris Winkle. Swing and a miss. Got him. Nice pitch. So one away with Fedco at first base, and Siegel gets the job done. David Langer coming to the plate, and he is used to these high pressure situations as we saw on Tuesday. Comes through and just off the metal, and that would win it for the UConn Huskies as they beat the Houston Cougars on the walk-off. And Houston eliminated yesterday. <laughs> I'm sure if you'd asked him, what did you do after you rounded first base, he'd say, my mind's blank. I don't yeah. remember. But I have no idea. Ended in a big celebration in the middle of this diamond. 82 miles an hour and a called strike. Langer over two with a walk today. Tell you, I don't know. The next thing I know, I'm in the dugout. Coach Penders is saying we can go to the beach for an hour or so <laughs> on the next day. Chopper foul on the left side. Michael Chiaviti scheduled to come to the plate after Langer. As long as he stays out of a double play, Chiaviti 0 for 3. If they go in order here at Langer and Chiaviti, then it's the top of the order due up at the top of the night. Wichita State, meanwhile, they'll have 2, 3, and 4. Ritter, O'Brien, and Wallace coming up in the bottom of the eighth. Siegel swinging a miss on the outside, and he struck him out. Two away after the leadoff walk, and now he's it out away from getting through the eighth. Four strikeouts recorded by the Huskies' offense in the last three innings. Couldn't get a piece of Siegel's breaking ball there. Christian Fedko is going to pinch hit for Chiaviti.
Christian Fedko this year. 258 and 55 games. Now it's 56, 53 starts. Three homers, 39 driven in. He's got 15 doubles. Five ten sophomore, Pennsylvania native. So you got Kyler Fedko at first, Christian Fedko at the plate. Inside, and a 1-0 count. So Christian, the sophomore. Kyler, the freshman. Christian's a two-time member of the American Weekly Honor Roll for his performances on offense. In the dirt, it's going to be a wild pitch, so that's going to advance Kyler Fedko into scoring position. So now Christian has an RBI opportunity and a chance to give the Huskies the lead. So let's see if the Fedcos can come up big. Christian driving in Kyler. 2-0. Takes a strike on the inside at 88 miles an hour. Fedco with a standout freshman season. He was the rookie position player of the year last year in the American. Led the team with 15 doubles and made 52 starts as a rookie. Two one foul right side, and that's going to get into the upper deck where it rattles around. Fedco made a name for himself in the postseason last year as a freshman. Had a pair of two hit games here in Clearwater against USF and ECU. Led his team to the championship game, and then in the regionals, had a go ahead eighth inning home run against top 15 Coastal Carolina to make the regional final. Swing and a tip into the net, struck him out, that'll end the inning. Three in a row after the leadoff walk, no runs, no hits, no errors, a runner left on base. We go to the bottom of the eighth, still knotted at seven at the American Baseball Championships presented by the U.S. Air Force Reserve. This is St. Pete Clearwater home to 35 miles of white sand bliss. But it's more than emerald surf and gulf breezes. The beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of life, nature, art, music, or whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast in St. Pete Clearwater. Love the beach. More than 7,000 student athletes rising to become champions in 22 different sports at 13 esteemed institutions across 11 states. 360,000 students and 2.6 million alumni rise up in celebration of a Power Six conference known as the American, powered by determination. It's going to be two, three, and four coming up in a 7 7 game for Wichita State. And UConn back to the bullpen. CJ Dandido went two innings, three hits, pair of runs, both earned, no walks, four strikeouts, and a wild pitch. 33 pitches, 24 four strikes. And Jim Penders back to the pen. He will go with number 24, Caleb Worcester, a redshirt freshman from Rhode Island, six foot, 178 pounds. Jeff, he's the team leader in appearances with 30, all out of the pen. 2.70 ERA, three wins against one loss and a save. Caleb this season in 36 and two-thirds has given up just 20 hits and only 11 earned runs. He struck out 28 in those 36 innings. Opponents are hitting 169 against him. Tie ball game, the home team, Wichita State, coming to the plate, trying to break that tie here on a beautiful afternoon in Clearwater, Florida. They're going to have two, three, and four. The all-conference second baseman, Luke Ritter, followed by... Mason O'Brien and Paxton Wallace. 
Ritter has been on four times today. O'Brien twice. Wallace still trying to reach base for the first time. Caleb Worcester followed C.J. Dandeno in the last game, the win against Houston. Worcester, through two-thirds of an inning, faced three batters, gave up one hit, struck out one, and walked one. It ended up being Jacob Wallace that won that game. Wallace only faced two batters. And look who's in the ballpark. The green wave rolling in. Interesting to see who's going to be the home team in that game. Both of them high seeds between Cincinnati and Tulane wearing the angry wave on the hat tonight. I like the look. I enjoyed, thought it was funny as they walked in and looked out to their left. You know, Cody Hosey, Hudson Haskins immediately picked up those flags out there in left field. Mm -hmm. Ground ball at short. Prado plants, goes the first in time. One up, one down on the first pitch by Worcester. And that'll bring up Mason O'Brien. Ritter's been retired a couple of times tonight. Prado had to make a strong throw, sets up. Blazes one over to first base. Ritter hasn't been on since that intentional base on balls in the fourth. Two seventy-five on the year for O'Brien. Four homers, 14 runs batted in. Lefty versus lefty. Worcester delivers the strike down the middle. In the game against ECU, O'Brien went one for four. Also had a run scored. Made nine putouts. 0 and 1. Way off the plate that time, just got away from him, over gripped on it. Evens things up at a ball and a strike. Now the 1 1 in and outs it down to left field and out of play. Worcester up to 91 miles an hour there. If you're Wichita State, you'd really love to get O'Brien on here. Standing on deck is Paxton Wallace with nine home runs and 35 RBIs on the year. A run would be very critical here. UConn's going to have the top of their order due up in the ninth inning. One, two, just up and in. Take a closer look at Worcester's offering there. That finishes a little bit elevated, though it did cross the plate late. 2-2 two, two count now to Mason O'Brien. And Bill's going to be back all the way around. 2-2, two, two, and he got up under it, and they'll foul it straight back and out of play. We mentioned in our nightcap that both the teams that advanced were the higher seed, and they were both the home team in their first game. And we take a look where Tulane decided to sit down once they came in the ballpark. They're on the visitor's side. Now, they might just have enjoyed that spot and laid claim to that, <laughs> but we don't know quite yet up here in the broadcast booth, but Tulane might be the visitor for our next game. The 2-2 drives one out in the left center field. Got some air up under it, so it's not going to carry out of here. Topa from left field makes the catch. Give Edie took the aggressive angle at it, but Topa had a better play in left center. So Wallace will come to the plate with two outs and nobody on, trying to shake off three strikeouts today. Wallace over four. When he put it in play, it was a ground out to third in the third inning. 251, 282 with a pair of outs and an inning. In fact, Wallace and Kadena back to back have struggled today. That chop right back to Worcester, flips the first. One, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And we are still knotted at seven at the American Baseball Championships presented by the U.S. Air Force Reserve.
We all dream about our next vacation. But some of us turn those dreams into action. The bookers, the doers, they hit that confirmation button and let's go. Because bookers know that the perfect place to stay is right there for the booking. Be a booker at booking.com. The world's number one choice for booking accommodations. Tulane Green Wave, staying in the shade, getting ready. They'll play 47 minutes once we complete this ball game as we are heading into the night tied at 7 here in Clearwater at Spectrum Field. Home of the Philadelphia Phillies spring training facility and the Clearwater Threshers. I was talking last night on my broadcast on the left about some of, some of my favorite uniforms would be the powder blue zip-up jerseys of that wow. 1980 World Championship Philly team with we talked about Schmidt and Rose and Boa and Carlton and McGraw Gary Matthews what a team it, it's great to walk the halls here up yeah. on the broadcast deck and see the the pictures that they've hung here with such care you see Richie Ashburn you see Harry the K you see all these guys you know that just that were a big part of the heart of the Phillies and there with it all throughout the years the Philly fanatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, one. One of the more lively yeah. mascots you'll ever meet. John Topa he has one for three. He did walk and score in the third inning. Oh, one, a Siegel stays in, and he'll leave it low. You know, one of the old Phillies who made Tampa home for a long time was the Hall of Fame pitcher Robin Roberts, right. who ended up being a coach for the USF Bulls early on in their baseball program. 1-1 one, one pitch now to Siegel, or from Siegel. Gets into that one in the left center field. This one's going to drop. So the go-ahead run on base to lead off the top of the night for the UConn Huskies, and that's the second hit of the afternoon for John Topa. Topa has been so good over his career for Jim Penders and the Huskies. Hits this one into no man's land. That's going to drop every time. And now a base runner, the go-ahead run, standing on first base. Well, they want to talk things over with Anthony Prado before he gets into the batter's box. Prado hitting 308, 336 with runners in scoring position and 15 doubles, but do they want to push Topa to second base? He stole his 14th base of the season back in the third. They're going to bring Wallace in at third just in case he is already on the grass. Shows bunt out. It's way up and out for a ball. Little room on the left side of the infield if he pulls the bat back and swings, but he won't. He'll take a strike, though, on the outside. Talked about some milestones today with that hit. John Topa all alone now in 10th place all time in hits with 229 for the Huskies. One one delivery that is fouled off. So now will you risk a two strike bunt opportunity? You're gonna let Prado swing away. Wind continues to gust in from a right field as they'll play back up the middle. Double play depth. Wallace isn't going to risk not being in position if Prado tries to 
sneak one in with two strikes. He's not going to, and he blisters it right past him at third base, but it's foul. Prado, one of your most productive batters here in Clearwater for UConn the last two plus seasons. Already a pair of hits in this tournament. One and two. Breaking ball, high chopper up the middle and no play is gonna be made. Ritter came over, just couldn't get the dig on the chopper. So everyone safe, first and second, nobody out. Tough ball to pick up. Coming hard after it is Ritter, and he'd have to have really contorted his body to make a throw here. His momentum leading him the other way. Jeff, that one right off the cuff of the glove. So Prado's got a second hit. This one an infield single. Michael Woodworth, 1-4-3, had a hit taken away on the diving play by Catsby in the seventh. Woodworth, eight doubles, five homers, 35 driven in. But if you ask him to bunt, you can get the second and third for Winkle and Gazzo. They will play in for the bunt. Now he shows it. Squares gets it down. That's going to advance the runners. They'll take a look, but it's going to be a 3-4 sacrifice, and Woodworth gets the job done. As Topol will go to third, Prado moves his way to second. Woodworth will be his ninth sacrifice, which leads UConn. Nice placement in between both of them. First baseman over to the covering second baseman. Now two in scoring position. Pat Winkle already with one RBI in this ball game. He got started early, Jeff. He got that leadoff home run in the second. He really nailed it out to right field over that world championship banner up onto the walkway. He's flown out, struck out, grounded out on that plate O'Brien when it hit the bag at first base two innings ago and he'll quickly be down 0-1. And Phil drawn in. Trying to keep Topa at third or gun him out of the plate. If you're able to go back to that third base shot looking in on the batter, that's Pat Winkle's brother, number 11, Chris Winkle, right behind him on the top step. Has a nice view of his brother up there at the plate. See if he can come through. Calls time, it'll step back out. Well, let's take a look at that home run earlier on the leadoff home run. Back in the second. Connects on it, and that's been our only home run of the game so far, despite 14 runs and 18 hits. Takes it down and away. They'll leave it at one and one. I believe every game has had a long ball. I know last night Memphis with a trio of home right. runs. UCF hit one. One one pitch and there's a single through the right side. Topa's gonna score. They're gonna hold Prado with Van Born playing shallow. But the Huskies will grab the lead as Winkle comes through with the second RBI of the day. Three singles in the inning off of Siegel. The sacrifice bunt moves two into scoring position, and UConn will capitalize. They have now gone ahead here in this frame. Paul Gonzo, one for four, single to the fourth. He struck out of the second, the fifth, and the seventh inning. Well, back to back games that UConn has scored runs late in the ballgame in the ninth inning. And now they're going to be looking potentially for it to be Worcester, Worcester to shut down Wichita State in the bottom half of the ninth. Tries to get that safety squeeze, fouls it over to the rider. They could 
Maybe see Jacob Wallace trying to ensure that they get to Saturday. What an incredible day for the freshman catcher, Pat Winkle. Got him on the board first with the home run, then the go-ahead RBI single here in the ninth. No one one now from Siegel. Shoots it foul over to the right side. Oh, two Gazo is going to have to fight it off here. Chopper foul. Well, both these teams put so much effort into this game. Hard fought. It's gone back and forth. Unfortunately, for the loser of this game, you're taking on East Carolina tomorrow in an elimination Friday game at 3 p.m. So you'll take on ECU, the regular season champions, whoever does not come away with the win this afternoon. O2 now to Gazzo. High chopper left side. That is going to get another run in. So Gazzo gets the job done on the high 6-3 ground out. That'll bring in Prado. Winkle easily to the second. They had no chance at a double play. That was chopped so high. They do get the out, but now trailing by two. This one will come in across just in time as the run scores as Prado plates. You got a very dangerous bat coming to the plate. Still a man in scoring position. Got to get that final out and put your offense back at the dish. Kyler fed to a ground to short. Flew out to left. He doubled and scored in a mid walk. Down and in. Well, it would have been kind of crazy. And it could still happen if Wichita State rallies here. For the second time in three days, if you had one of these teams that are just used to being in the semifinals, yesterday we saw Tulane and Houston. You bump out Houston for the week. Well, not Tulane, they had won, but Houston got bumped out by ECU. And then if you'd have matched up ECU and UConn, you'd have had another team that we're used to seeing playing on a Saturday and a Sunday could have been bumped. This could still happen if the Shockers rally, but Jim Penders team that's used to being there showing their experience late in this ball game. Yeah, I agree with you there. They've got a bunch of guys that have gone deep into this tournament year after year. How closely contested has this series been in 2019? Each team has scored 20 runs off each other now. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. Put down on a knee after that one, down and in. UConn won the regular season series two games to one, but add up all the runs to this point, it's 20 to 20. Ball, two strikes, two outs, runner at second. Cincinnati Bearcats, the league's runner-up during the regular season, made their way to the ballpark. One, two, swing and a miss. Got him again. That'll end the inning, but the Huskies come up big of the night with two runs on three hits. No errors. We'll leave a man on base. We're going to the bottom of the night. UConn, three outs away. Zero. All the electrolytes, zero sugar. Get more out of zero. Strong in mind, strong in body, strong in school, sport, life. The grind is 10% physical and 90% mental. The mind is the power. The body is a means to jump higher, run faster, be smarter, and live longer. There is no weakness when it comes to seeking help. We are stronger together. So let's talk about it. A waterfall starts with one drop. Change starts with one person. The American is dedicated to ending the stigma related to mental health. And promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. Promoting success through a healthy, powerful mind. 
Headed to the bottom of the ninth, and the Huskies got a pair in the top half to lead it 9-7. to seven. Worcester is done. One inning, no hits, no runs, no walks, no strikeouts. Eight pitches, six for strikes. Jim Penders smelling a pass here to the semifinals on Saturday as he goes to the pen. He'll bring in the hammer. 14 saves for Jacob Wallace this year in his junior season and a 0.77 ERA. He picked up one win already in the walk-off victory against the Houston Cougars. He only faced three batters, had a strikeout, and came away with the victory. 35 innings pitched for Jacob this year, only 18 hits and three earned runs. He's only walked eight and struck out 53 in 35 innings, opponents hitting 150 against him. Jeff, you'll remember last year he was part of this all-tournament team as a reliever. He was really a setup guy last year as a sophomore for Coach Penders. This year he has become the stopper. Let's see if he excels in the role today to put him in the semifinals. Well, in two games over three days, he's got a chance to get a win and a save, so making a very strong case already to get back on that all-tournament team. Kadena, Slavens, Segrist, five, six, and seven in the Shocker order. Coach Butler's gotten some production from the five, six, seven hole tonight. Maintain mainly Slavens and Segrist. They've both got hits. They've scored runs. They've got to come through here, though. You see the rest of the team looking on from the top of the rail. We're ready to get going here in the bottom of the ninth with UConn leading by two. So here comes Ross Kadena, the catcher. He is 0 for 4 today. Ended the six on the fielder's choice. He's had three pop-ups before that. 254, 275 when he leads the inning off. Can UConn trying to make their way to Saturday where you would have to beat Jim Penders two times? There's a strike call at the knees and Kadena down 0-1. Oh, one offering. That yeah, went down and out. A one one count. Right hander versus right hander. Ground ball to the left side. So he gets his first hit of the day, and he's going to set the table here in the bottom of the ninth. And that'll bring the tying run to the plate. And Brady Slavens, who had his first career home run two days ago. Fastball, low, still went out there and got it with a nice piece of hitting. Drives it into left field. Now the left-hander at the plate. 2.30 with the home run. The 23 RBI has four doubles. He's, find a, he's found a way to be on four time, uh, three times a day. A walk, a single, and an air. Fouls that one left side. He popped up the short the last time in the seventh. Key is here when you're in this situation at the bottom of the ninth as a player comes up is not having to get the hit to win it. Not having to get a hit to tie it, but to extend the inning. You get up, find a way on, get it to the next guy. Try to fill the bases up. Two of Wallace's saves on the year came against Wichita State. Oh, two up and out. 95 miles an hour. Wallace back at the beginning of this month through an inning and two-thirds of relief over two appearances, struck out three, no hits, no runs. One-one delivery, fastball caught, strike at 95 miles an hour on the outside. Great squeeze there by Winkle. Might have brought it up just a little bit. Looked good to the home plate umpire. Great velocity. Wallace, a 6'1", 190-pounder from Methuen, Mass. In his junior season. 
Comes at him, went after one upstairs a little bit, fouls it straight back. Shadow's starting to creep across the home plate area. So the ball out of the sun quickly into the shadow. Wallace didn't even really get extended against Houston. Only had to throw seven pitches to come away with the win in relief. One, two at the letters and another foul ball. Slavin's a freshman hanging in there. Can Brady Slavin's come through here? Representing the tying run, just trying to put this one in play. He was ranked the number one overall player out of Olathe, Kansas. Number one shortstop in the state. One, two, down and out. Nice take. Two, two, runner with the lead at first. Swing and a miss, he got him, he battled up there and he's frustrated as he slams the bat, but he'll go down on strikes and there's one away, now double play, get in the ball game. Eight strikeouts today for Wichita State at the plate, 92 miles an hour and got it by his bat. Segrist, a pair of hits this afternoon. Singled in the second and scored an RBI double in the fifth. Medina still at first, the leadoff single. Ground ball through the left side, and the tying run is on base. It'll be first and second with one out. Sometimes swinging at that first pitch is the only strike you're going to get that's worth a hit. He found one. About to say that was someone like Wallace, as we see, just brought the fastball belt high. You know he's going to fill up the strike zone, so you may as well go out there early before taking and being down 0-2. Cat's feed today, one for two. He's been hit. He's walked. He's been on three times. 270 on the year. 268 with the runners in scoring position. Fly ball to left field as Topa's got that track down, but it's carrying now. And Topa, what an incredible play up against the wall. And it's going to be a double play. Nope. I don't, I don't know if they're going to call it a catch. Yeah. I don't think he left early. Penders wants to make the argument that Kadena left second early heading to try and tag into third. But that catch was spectacular by Topa flying into the wall. That went just howling in. It carried on him. And they thought he left early. That's why they went to second. And now the crew's going to get together. And it looks like they're going to go in there. Now the review could potentially end the ball game. So Kadena tagged up, but they came in a second regardless, thinking they had the double play that he left early. And now we're going under the curtain, behind the curtain to check it out. How many great plays have we seen in this ballgame from both teams? But that's the second one by Topa, yeah. who got on his horse a couple innings ago and kept two runs from scoring after he tracked down a ball. Also had a two-hit, two-run day. Topa went to his left, and it was hanging up there. But just like last night, that win has really picked up throughout the ball game and that just rode on him and it wasn't too far maybe another few feet from getting out of here. How often are you able to make a game winning catch. Now we did see that by Tulane two days ago. Hudson Haskin made right. that diving catch to preserve the win and he made a game winning catch. But if Topa makes this catch and they determine that the runner left early you're right game's over. Right now Kadena at third base. Waiting for the result. <laughs> what a huge play by the senior captain out there. 
going to have a little replay here, a little split screen they're working on right now. Now, Kadena did not stay on the bag when the ball left. So right. He came off the bag but watched it go. And I watched him go back and touch the bag. The determination is, did he do it after the catch was made? All right, let's see. All right, foot on the bag. Now we'll see when the catch was made. Trying to sync it up. That's a difficult thing to do. We do appreciate the efforts of our production staff. Here we go. Here we go. There's a great angle. Catch. He even stuttered a bit and yeah. waited. Well, that timing is in sync, which I'm sure it is. Yeah, they're going to have corners of the corners and two outs. They'll give the officials another look at it here. They'll shrink that box. Topa just did an incredible job, man. What a world of technology we live in where we can watch them work. Yep. That ball sailed on Topa a little bit. <laughs> Crashes into the wall to make the catch. Maybe you thought it was going to be a routine catch deep in the grass. You can see Kadena coming back to the bag, tags, and gets to third. Now, the original call is catch is made, runner is safe, and tagged correctly and standing on third. I'd be so, interested to see if they overturn that and end our ball game. Just like a football review, it's like going to a court of law. You have to end disputable evidence that it didn't. You have to be able to prove beyond a reasonable doubt the call was not correct. I, I feel like in this instance, though, there's less pressure on the, the crew to try and make their previous call stand up. They want to get the right call here. There's not as much pressure. So Kadena will be safe on third, and the game continues. Now from what we saw, that is the correct call. Now David Van Voren with a single and a double today, and three RBI comes up. Still, they've got to get Segrist in from first base, and there's two away. He did not tag up and remained on first base after that single he hit before Catsby made that one fly. Out towards left field. Crew still talking things over here at third base. Even after the review. Now only two of the uh, umpires were able to go in and see it. They're probably just reiterating what they saw. Meanwhile, Wallace tossing, soft tossing on the mound to stay loose. Todd Butler, the head coach for Wichita State, walks out of the dugout third base side. Maybe he wants an explanation, and he's about to get it. Jeff, you're able to see both angles in this replay. Topa goes up with the grab. And there is like a split second, a half second after that grab that Kadena takes off from second to third. Looks like they're just going over a few things in the scorecard here. The official book that the umpires have. Now we're ready as the crew breaks up. Wichita State down to the last out to the nine hole hitter, David Van Boren, 268, 429 with runners in scoring position, has the one home run. Kenny has driven in three runs today on a 2-4-3 day. Joshua McDonald, pitching coach for UConn, calls time. And again, will give us plenty to talk about. Happy that the right call was made. At least that's what we saw from our perspective. You wouldn't want that anticlimactic right. ending. Right after such an incredible nine innings of work by both of these teams, you're going to give Wichita State, the home team, the eighth seed in this tournament, a chance to upset the two-time conference tournament champion. So McDonald done, ready to go back out to Wallace, who will take on today's leading RBI man for either team, David Van Voren, with three runs driven in. Been impressive this afternoon. Two runs single in the second, a sack one in the fourth, lined out to left field on a hard hit ball in the fifth, and then an RBI double in the seventh. 
key is, is can they find a way to get Segrist up to second? He's got eight steals. You try to find a dirt ball maybe to run on. I am racking my mind to think about what Coach Butler has to say with them. Well, he's not, he's not discussing how many timeouts someone had and should there be a pitching change or anything. I'm not sure if he's... Could it, could it be this? Could it be that we didn't see it because we were focused on the play at third, but did Segrist tag up from first right. to second and they send him back? I think Coach Butler has said his piece and he's heading back to the third base dugout. Couple of reviews in today's ball game. Now Wichita State will try and tie it up. First and third, two away. The Shockers trying to extend the inning and the ball game. Swing and a miss at 86. down to the last strike. The 0-2 delivery, swing and a miss, struck him out, and the Huskies hold off the Shockers, and the Huskies moving along to the semifinals yet again. No runs, two hits, no errors, a pair left on base. UConn with a 9-7 win, and Shockers fought valiantly. They'll have a chance to play again. They're still alive with the 8-1 upset yesterday, tomorrow. But, you know, ho-hum, another semifinal appearance for Jim Penders. That's 10 in the last 11 years for the UConn Huskies. What an incredible run. They seem to play very well in Clearwater. A uh, heroic performance by Wichita State. This is a team that put four runs on the board in the second. They were able to add some in the fifth and the sixth. Just not quite enough today to knock off the Huskies. Again, 9-7, UConn win. They go to Saturday, Wichita, coming back to play tomorrow. Opportunities present themselves every day. Opportunities that move us forward. Opportunities to serve our time in your community. Explore your opportunities in the Air Force Reserve. St. Pete Clearwater, home to Clearwater Beach. The number one beach in the U.S. is chosen by travelers on TripAdvisor. It's not just white sand and golf breezes. Beach is an attitude. It's the vibe of whatever brings you joy. Experience the American tropics on Florida's Gulf Coast. Visit stpclearwater.com. Zero. All the electrolytes, zero sugar. Get more out of zero. Afternoon in Clearwater, Florida, as the Huskies meeting out in right field, nine, seven. Nine runs, 11 hits, two airs for the Huskies. Seven runs, 10 hits, one air for Wichita State. Saw a little bit of everything. Some great defensive plays, some timely hitting. Something you want to see here on winner's bracket Thursday. Well, both of these teams with double-digit hits, nine runs, 11 hits for UConn, seven and 10 for the Shockers. Well, they did it with just the one home run as well, and that was an early leadoff home run in the third inning. As, again, we talked about Jim Penders and his ball club going to the semifinals, but Wichita State, they come in, they get an 8-1 upset, nearly pull this one out, and tomorrow they've got a chance for another 
8-1 upset and a chance to play on Saturday as well. They'll be our first game tomorrow. That one will be first pitch 3 p.m. on the American Digital Network. So ECU and Wichita State round two here in Clearwater. Don't miss that game. UConn will play the very first game on Saturday morning in the semifinals. 10 a.m. first pitch for that one. Well, before we go downstairs and hear from some coaches and players as they still meet in right field, we have a nice intriguing game to match up Tulane heavy hitting ball club. They are going to live and die with their offense. Cincinnati, you look at the stats and they're a team that has just found a way to second place this year in the league. Had it not been for the incredible 40 plus win year by ECU and Cliff Godwin getting coach of the year. Definitely Coach Guggen's uh, got some serious consideration. I think so, too, and he's got a good group of upperclassmen, whether it's Jace Mercer, whether it's A.J. Bumpus. Those guys have made their names known here the last four years. They're trying to push Cincinnati into uncharted waters here in Clearwater. They're trying to get them into the semifinals and have a chance to play for a championship. Been a long time since the Bearcats have done that. They did it in 2008 against Louisville back in the Big East tournament. I'm impressed with what they've done. I think it... I know we look at the numbers, and it's not smoke and mirrors. It's a bunch of quality guys that do what they have to do to win and kind of rooting for Cincinnati a little bit. Want to see how well they can play in this upcoming game. The fun thing is, whether it's tomorrow, whether it is Saturday, with Wichita State, with Cincinnati uh, winning the early games, you're going to see some new teams play on the weekend. That's always fun. Uh, this was a great game. Just a, a testament to all the work that these teams have put in over the years and all our staff and crew have done to put this together here in Clearwater. We think we've got another good one coming up tonight between Tulane and Cincinnati. We hope that you will join us for that one. I'm excited to hear from the winners today. What a great performance by UConn. Well, UConn again wins it by a final of 9-7 here this afternoon, and they're going to enjoy another day off tomorrow before they play that first game, as Garrett mentioned, on Saturday. Meanwhile, let's head down to Haley Alton. Coach, your freshman, Pat Winkle, able to step up big in this game. He got the scoring started and then came up clutch again in the ninth. How much maturity did he show at the plate this afternoon? Yeah, he needed to. He made a mistake. He didn't block a third strike. He's a freshman still, I guess, in that. We've been harping on that. He needed to step up, and he did. He made up for his mistake. So, um, no, I'm hard on my catchers, and um, he knows that, and he knew he had to do something, and he did it. You know, he wasn't trying to lift the ball, you know, getting that RBI, the infield's up. We, we teach them, or we preach. Just hit it hard. It doesn't have to be elevated. Just try to hit a, hit a ball hard when infield's up. And he did that. And uh, then Paul Gazzo, 0-2, battles really hard and puts a ball in play off that hard surface and made something happen. In the ninth inning, a crucial second out by your senior, John Topa. How incredible was that catch out and left? Oh, my God. You know, we're in no doubles, and the ball just kept carrying. It was weird because the wind had kind of shifted, and it looked like everything was getting knocked down. One of their guys got into one I thought was going to really go, and it didn't. But then that one really carried, so it was a tough left field to play, and he did a good job adjusting. I don't think he got a, a really great first step, but he ran it down with his speed. Your team able to grind this one out 2-0 this week in the conference tournament, one win away from heading to that championship game. What was your message to the group out here in the field? Well, I, you know, I was, I, it was an ugly game. I mean, we didn't play clean baseball. We need to play cleaner, but um, we got an opportunity to do that. Huskies play on Saturday in Clearwater, so that's what we do. All right, thanks, Coach. See you Saturday. Thanks, Haley. That is head coach Jim Penders, and we'll stay downstairs with Haley. Pat, home run, and then the go-ahead run in the ninth for you today. How confident were you at the plate? I've been confident to play. I mean, the last couple of weeks, my bat turned on a little bit. You know, you just have a bunch of guys in the lineup that can that can hit, so it makes it easy on a couple guys. But, you know, I got up there feeling confident and missed that first fastball. I knew I was probably going to get off speed, so I just sat back a little bit and hit that. And then, you know, didn't play too great defensively, so I was just trying to pick our team up offensively and got that last hit in the last inning. Hey, you mentioned your offense had to step up big today, 11 hits, 9 runs. What was clicking for that group? You know, we're just we're just confident right now. We're gritty. We're just we're battling out there. You know, that's something that we didn't have for part of the season is that fight mentality. And luckily, we got it the last part of the season, most important part. So we're just going up there, making tough at bats, making the pitchers work, and that's what we got to do. By the time your team takes the field again for a game, anyways, on Saturday, you will have been here almost a week, only played two games. How is your group balancing? spending time together, staying locked in, but also getting rest here in Clearwater. Yeah, I mean, we got a great group of guys that have really strong bonds together. So we're always hanging out, you know, whether it's at the beach, at the pool, getting food, ice cream. We love ice cream. Uh, but, you know, really just resting as much as possible, getting ready for the game, but also enjoying each other's company too. All right, thanks. We'll see you Saturday. Appreciate it. Thank you.
UConn a winner, and what a performance by the Huskies. Jacob Wallace has been big through two games. Wallace did great in relief. This guy's worked an inning and a third over two games, came away with a win against Houston, now the save against Wichita State. He's got his team in the semifinals. I think he's ready to pitch later on in the week, too. Huskies going on to Saturday, and Wichita State plays tomorrow at 3 Eastern, 2 Central against ECU. Stick around. Still have a good one coming up. Cincinnati and Tulane. For Haley Allen, Garrett Walbert, I'm Jeff Brightwell. We'll talk to you in a little while.